Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's up, everybody? And welcome to a brand new episode of the Jams and Cocktails live podcast. My name is Brad Brock. I will be your host tonight. Joining me here in the JNC Lounge tonight is the breathtaking Jordan Taylor. <laughs> breathtaking. Yeah. Breathtaking. As are you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm just taking breaths. That's what's going on here. Also joining us tonight here in the lounge is Derek Zugel. What, what? Whoop, whoop. Breathtaking as well. Thank Breathtaking you. as well. <laughs> and our very special guest singer-songwriter, Kevin McLaughlin. Whoop, whoop. Hey, there he is. Hey. <laughs> Yay, Kevin. Looking good over there, Kev. Why, that's generous. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys, thank you all so much for tuning in live with us tonight here on Facebook and YouTube. And thank the thank you to those of you catching the show later on on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform like iHeartRadio. Uh, wherever you're tuning in, please give us a like, follow, share and subscribe. Super important. We love that. Uh, coming up tonight on the show, we'll be chatting with Kevin about his brand new single release, Waiting Out the Weather. We'll get our midweek motivation with Tony. We'll get our music history and news from the Jordy Files. We'll play a round of Name That Tune with all of you out there listening in. And we'll spin the wheel to see if Derek or Jordan is going to be put through the Lipton Tea this week. Oh, I think yeah. they should be able to vote. They want to hear about Jordan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see. You we'll see. Say that. It's the wheel decides. Uh, but before we get down to business, as always, we're going to kick off this uh, episode with our shot of the week. I want to find out what they're making in this promo. We got to have yeah. that sometime. That right. looks good. It does look interesting. Yeah. Until they light it on fire. Until they light it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, we've gotten a lot of um, a lot of comments about uh, the shot of the week because I, I usually post it the day before. Um, <laughs> so this week's shot was submitted by our friend Ricky from the band Slightly Mighty, and it's called the Ball Washer. That's right. You heard it right. Not a mispronunciation. It's the ball washer. Uh, so this shot calls for fireball whiskey, hence its namesake. But here there be pirates. So, <laughs> yeah. So we are going to switch out the fireball with code rum cinnamon. We're going to keep to the code for all you code rum lovers out there. So. In this particular recipe, obviously, uh, it is one part code red, one part peach schnapps. Shake that in ice and then top it off with a splash of cranberry juice and Red Bull. And whatever you're drinking at home, uh, glasses up to you. Are you guys ready for this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I don't know if I am. But, hey, cheers, you guys. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Ooh. I actually didn't hate it. That was surprisingly hmm. wonderful. It was worthy of the name, that's for sure. Let's show yeah. off this bottle. That's good stuff. Yes, that oh. is Code Rum Cinnamon Flavored Rum. Our very good friends and sponsors at Code Rum. Oh, ignore the blue. <laughs> it's okay. It's yes. okay. We had to uh, we had to do a little surgery because the uh, pore spouts get falling out. Yes. So, you know. Little uh, human ingenuity never hurt anybody. Yeah, to avoid a mess. <laughs> to avoid a mess. Uh, Jordan Jordan loves making messes over there. So <laughs> uh, yeah, especially when it comes to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and tonight I am drinking a gigantic crowler of Firehog from our friends at Hop Life Brewing. So, yay. Yeah. How's uh, how's everybody been doing, Derek? What's been going on, man? Man, not a whole lot. Just. Uh had a great time cooking for you guys today and uh, yes hope y'all enjoy it we had a great time eating it <laughs> derek is our master of craft services we we just keep getting bigger here at jnc uh now we have uh craft services uh liquor deliveries uh <laughs> yeah you guys got it going on you got your own even your like transparent white umbrella now y yeah you know we, we we try our best to uh to be somewhat um professional <laughs> I know. No, no, shocking. Really, you do a good job. Though. 
Oh, any of you that tuned in last week, uh, it was a, a little bit of a technical nightmare, but um, thank God for post-editing. We got it out, but Summer Gill was a, was a gem, and she saved that show. Absolutely. <laughs> so, anyway, Kevin, what have you been up to, man? Oh, man. Um, well, I've on the 15th of August, I finally achieved a lifelong goal of mine, and I released some music. Yes, Woo! indeed. Woo! Yeah, so, you know, now it's not nearly as big a deal as it used to be, but I did it, damn it, finally, after all these years. <laughs> yeah. I finally did it. Hey, don't get it twisted, though. It's a big deal to release music, you know? Like, there, there's a certain build-up to that, and, and to put something out for people to, to cherish is... Uh, it's a big deal. I'm very proud of you. Well, thank you, man. And it's certainly a big deal to me. And uh, it, now that I've broken the seal... There'll be much more to come in short order. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, hmm. before we get too deep into all of that, uh, I am going to do a proper intro for Kevin, as always. Uh, Kevin has appeared on our podcast several times, uh, either here in the lounge or on video. Uh, he's been a mainstay and staple of the local music scene, performing in multiple bands over the years, and is now performing with the Kevin McLaughlin Band and performing solo and duo shows with his daughter, Sarah, all over town. So uh, check out, once again, our very good friend, Kevin McLaughlin. <laughs> right i don't care what you think of me <laughs> <laughs> period Yay. i figured i had to end that on a on a on a on a nice note there <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good thing too because you know if i thought about that i'd really be upset <laughs> oh man well let's jump right into it man uh because i've been wanting to chat with you about this for ages you know so let's talk about the brand new single waiting out the weather you just dropped that a little over a week ago uh which i'm proud to say you performed it here on the podcast very f for the very first time. That yeah. was the debut, like uh, the day or two after you had written it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, this was the first place it was ever played, like for other people to hear. Yeah. And I loved it. You know, it, it was such a relevant piece of songwriting at the time. It still is, which is, you know, is crazy um, because we're all still kind of waiting out the weather. Um, and it, it just seems like this. You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, but phew, what a long tunnel. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about writing that song and, 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 and what prompted that and how you pulled it all together. Well, I was, I was actually driving down St. Lucie West Boulevard and I noticed that, you know, that was back when there was no cars on the road. There was nobody out anywhere. All the stores were closed. And I was just lamenting the fact that you know, we're all alone. But I realized that we're all together in being alone. Right. So I wanted to, um, you know, just kind of well, like any any significant event, you know, the way uh, us, us as artists, I like to call myself an artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, get it out is just write a song about it. So I, I wanted uh, to kind of lament the fact that we were going all through this and at the same time you know maybe shine a little ray of hope in the whole thing and you know i rushed and put it out you know that recording that you hear is actually the janky demo i did in my bathroom <laughs> yes and, uh, those are the best yeah. <laughs> so it's, but i knew by the time i was able to get it recorded for real it would it would be like forever so i wanted it to come out while it was still relevant and so i just kind of polished up my janky you know, demo, put some more tracks on it in the garage. So it was recorded in the bathroom and in the garage. Dude, one of, one of my favorite parts, and I, as soon as I had listened to it for the first time, uh, you had sent me an advanced copy because <sighs> very special. You are Brad Brock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed, fun. indeed, very special. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was so interesting because I was I was listening to it, and uh, I was listening to it just through some regular speakers, and then I I heard some things, and I was like, 
I need, and I ran and I put headphones on and I listened to it. And like, there was this rainstorm going on. And I was like, how cool is it that he put like a little rainstorm in the back for waiting out the weather? Uh, and so I reached out and I was like, Kevin, I love this. I love the rainstorm was a great touch. And he's like, well, that's because I was recording some of it in my garage and it picked up a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so let me share the joy of recording in the garage in Florida when the summer is coming on. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting next to the air conditioning unit. So I got to go in and turn the thermostat up so the thing doesn't kick in while I'm recording. So now everybody in the house is upset. Um, and then, of course, I was so focused on what I was doing, I didn't even realize that you know, the garage door was open that much in the bottom and it was torrential rain outside. And so I got really upset about the fact that I just played the take that I want to keep, but it's raining on it. And then I'm like, well, it is waiting out the weather. So hopefully it won't be bad. And uh, uh, hopefully it's not. Uh, it when I tell you that it made me run and listen to it more intensely Intensely, intensely, maybe both of those. Both. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> through headphones, um, and really got to listen to the song and really gave it a truly like. I, I feel like you got a little like hook in the hook there. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it, well, my goal with all of my songs is it's and it's in all of my promo to transport the listener, and you know, like to do what got done for me. Like Greg Allman did that for me initially with the song Midnight Rider. Ah, uh, yeah. He mm. instantly transported me to a world that I have never had never been to before and i do all i can to get back there all the time right right and so to be able to do that in a song for someone else is really the goal so great well you know it's for being recorded in a bathroom and uh and in the garage it sounds great dude uh very very cool how um going a step further than that how was the experience setting up the release and finally seeing it available on all the iTunes platform and Spotify and all these places where you is basically the main hub for music today. Well, it was simultaneously incredibly easy and horrifically difficult <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, like we live in the future. It, right. I, I did it through CD baby mm -hmm. and they're awesome. They just, you just kind of press a button and they do everything for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so that made it, completely easy but you know that thing where like okay i'm finally gonna do this thing that i've been trying to do my whole life like what if i do it and then i have nothing else to do <laughs> but it happened and instead of it like what's the thing they in the in football they you know like no super bowl team ever wins again because they made their goal they're not doing anything right. they're not working out also <laughs> unless you're the patriots yeah well yeah <laughs> um so I didn't want that to happen to me, and it's not happening to me. It's it's energized me. It's really uh, got me excited about continuing to do what I do. It's awesome. You know, I I remember when I I released my very first uh, album, and this was 2010, which was which <laughs> which was Welcome to Hollywood. Okay. Um, Welcome to Hollywood by Brad Brock. Yeah. Where can I hear that? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Spotify. I can't wait. Uh, Spotify or iHeartRadio or wherever I'm you gonna, uh, listen to music. You're learn a Brad Brock song and play it. There you nice. go. I have three <laughs> albums up there. Three, uh, I can't wait to hear it. Three don't. studio albums and one live record. You better have um, a good one because I don't want to be playing bad songs on stage. <laughs> fair. That's fair. I'm sure, uh, you, I'm sure it's great. <laughs> <laughs> the, welcome to Hollywood, maybe not. So there's a, there's a couple tunes on there, a few tunes that I'm, I'm really, really uh, proud of. And uh, I'm glad that they are in my... I still play them almost every show. Um, but that, um, that first record, like this was 2010, 2009, two, on that cusp. And uh, Spotify didn't exist yet. Um, iTunes was still the main carrier for music. And I have released every record through reverb nation um believe it or not uh and it's it's been so easy and uh i just continue to do it because now i know their process and it all happens very quickly and i'm sure there may be better better platforms for releasing music but that was my jam and they have my whole catalog i get all my royalties everything is just like so nice and streamlined it's beautiful awesome um but yeah like what a when that very last submit button to like send it all through. I remember thinking in, in, in so uh, 
the experience is so potent that I still think about it and my heart races. Just that last button to put that record out. Did you have a similar experience? I, I did. And every moment of the creation and production process flashed through my mind. And I wanted to do it all over again before I pressed the button. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, no, we don't have time for that. I had the same. I had the same thing. I was like, you know, there's like a track here or a track there. I wasn't super happy with that guitar part or that vocal part was not not right where it needed to be and you know but it was like i had promised this release date and you know and thought i had all my ducks in a row a million things run through your mind before you hit that submit button. now i'm sure there's artists out there that are like oh no this is it and we send it away but uh, i don't know like i feel like my songs are my children in a lot of ways so it's like are you ready to send them off to school parents you know what i'm talking about yeah well i think i've told you this before it was prince that said you know your songs are like your children, and sometimes your children are ugly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just got to get over it. <laughs> no, that's not. I mean, he literally said that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it is true that, um, you know, a good mix is never finished. It's just abandoned. Yes. And uh, the and, and I tend to have those um, those. Rel- unrelenting perfectionist tendencies and if i let that cat out of the bag no one's happy especially me uh-huh so what the process that i have adopted is that you know there's a there's a portrait you can have a portrait or you can have a picture you know a portrait is an idealized version and a picture is just how it is warts and all mm-hmm. so when i'm recording i look at it as taking a picture because mm-hmm. if i looked at it as a portrait i would never ever ever finish right yeah no it's true and and they're still like i've still gone back and remixed songs and you know tweaked them and you know ran them through like i've upgraded my recording software so i take the old tracks and i run them through new processes and you know different things or my my playing has advanced tremendously from 2010 to now and so like you know like i i still almost every record that i have moving forward from that i've taken a song from welcome to hollywood and re-recorded it in a in a new updated well, version there you go it's it's fun so if you if you're bored and you want to get down on my catalog and you'll, you'll hear some some of the same tunes in different okay. uh, different formats but um well, that's awesome man um i moved back to cue cards today because uh I needed more space on my on my computer screens to see all of everybody's comments. So, uh, Ashley and Dave, thanks for joining us. Um, and everybody else that's joined us so far. We're talking with Kevin McLaughlin about his latest release, Waiting Out the Weather. Um, I do have to say, I have noticed that you and your daughter, Sarah, have been performing more regularly as a duo recently. So, tell me about your experience getting to play all these shows with her. Uh, my daughter is an awesome singer, a, a very creative person. She was drawing pictures and singing before she could talk. And with things going the way that they are, the shows that I would normally have booked with the band are getting booked as a duo. Right, right. So um, it, I just get goosebumps all over listening to her perform and uh it is just so fun and you know our voices match well fairly to well together imagine so that the harmonies <laughs> like really slide right in the groove there so yeah it's just so much fun she she really can sing um i at first i thought it was just because i was her dad that i thought she was good so a little bit of bias <laughs> just a little but you know at the time when when she was coming of age becoming a teenager i I was making my living as a sound engineer so Mm -hmm. during the day i was doing sound for vince gill and alabama and whoever right and then i would come home to my daughter and be like oh she could she can sing and then any other female singer on earth i'd be like dear lord we have to listen to a girl sing again (laughs) stop (laughs) so so i'm like well like this can't be real because she can't be a good singer And I was confiding in a friend of mine. He happened to own a recording studio and he walked over to my daughter and he's like, okay, I'm going to give you a four album demo deal, a four four song demo deal. You come into my studio and record for free. So she picked four karaoke tracks and she we went in and recorded them. And I sat there and watched my daughter as a girl singer and the stereotypical singer, especially girls, can't sing in tune, can't come in in time, you know. 
And right. <laughs> I sat there and watched her through the control room window nail every cue and hit every note with like no band to prompt her, just listening to the recording. And I'm like, okay, she can sing. And it's like you had to you had to prove it to yourself. I had to prove it. To, I didn't trust my own instincts because I was so, you know. Anyway, um, and I'm really glad that you can because it is so fun to to perform with her. That's so cool. Yeah, I've been I've been privileged enough to to see the live streams and and get to kind of live vicariously through through my cell phone, uh, which I'm sure doesn't do justice. Don't, don't we all? No, <laughs> right. It, it just seems the, to be the thing. The cell phone's probably fairly generous, actually. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's very very cool uh i noticed that you guys play at little gyms quite often and uh and the new fort pierce beach resort down there yes in fort pierce. we recorded there on sunday afternoon and the light was perfect all the video looks awesome and i recorded it all multi-track and i sunk it all and it's it it really is good it looks no kidding. it looks great and we were both on that day and I'm, i know it's going to be really hard for me to to edit out the laughter and the jabbing in between songs. <laughs> Sometimes that's the best part. You should definitely leave some of that in there for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, too funny. Well, moving uh, up a member of your group uh, to a trio. Uh, tell me about the Kevin McLaughlin trio I've been seeing so much about lately. Is this just a smaller configuration of the Kevin McLaughlin band? Well, I, ha I have to be honest. Um the Kevin McLaughlin band, technically, because what I've been doing, I, not long ago, I realized that everybody does everything backwards, myself included. And so the way I apply that to the music is in, you know, like normally you would, you know, find the perfect people, uh, rehearse forever until you wish you were dead, <laughs> um, go look for some gigs and then play them and then realize nobody likes each other and then you break up. Right. So I'm doing it the other way around. I, I'm, I went out and got some gigs. Um, then I find people who will play them with me and, you know, so it's in what's typically the opposite order of doing things. But I found out that what everybody thinks is backwards is really the forwards way to do it. It makes right. way more sense. We played together for 18 months before we, we ever rehearsed. Yeah. So it, it gives me an opportunity to s experiment with personnel combinations and find the exact right formula to record with right sure and there are some amazing players in this area oh you're you're telling me man that this area is loaded with great players of all genres and age groups and you name it man they are just there's so much talent in this area it's unbelievable it, it yeah and so and i'm lucky enough that they are willing to work with me <laughs> so um like uh friday night i'm playing with mike lachavo on drums and Justin Mandel on bass. You know oh, Justin well. I knew Justin very well. Yeah, Justin is just straight up a monster on the on bass and guitar. Yeah, he's he's out of control. Awesome, awesome talent. And then Saturday night again, Mike Lashavo on drums and Steve Strickland on bass. Who uh, Steve played uh, bass with me every Thursday when we were doing the Tipsy Tiki Musician Spotlight oh, series. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, uh, and to be able to do that and have it be fairly seamlessly executed and not it's never bad it's just different flavors of good right so <laughs> it's really a lot of fun to, and in in always 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 uh a bit of the jam band attitude in there like sure my favorite part of the night is the happy accident right. you know some of my favorite people are actually happy accidents and uh, i was a happy accident see <laughs> see proof right there so um to, to take a sudden left turn and go somewhere that you never would have done on purpose but realize wow that was cool right let's extend this part uh and and to be doing that real you know playing with the uh, the, the parts of the song in real time live and then listening back to see how it went that is a blast yeah it's great and and it's so cool to live in an age as you always say eloquently living in the future we really do uh, live in the future. <laughs> uh to be able to to film in hd with great quality sound all of our little gigs all around town the the you know me I, I find it's just laziness to not want to get there five minutes early to set it all up but uh but the potential is there to like capture those really cool moments with these incredibly talented musicians yeah um that you you normally wouldn't 
good to jam with. And, you know, with everything that's going on, obviously the smaller configurations are more uh, in demand by many of the venues. Yeah, because of economics, of course. Yeah. And, you know, evidence that we live in the future, and one of the reasons why I say that all the time is, you know, when I was doing sound for a living and they wanted to record, um, it was an RV full of gear and two guys, <laughs> right. and it was $5,500 a day plus catering. Yep. Now... Oh, and the console that I was using at the time, it was a six-man lift, and it cost more than the house that I was living in. Right. The, and uh, now I've got a console that does all of that. It's the size of a shoebox. <laughs> right. And I've got a recording package that's built into it's a $30 app on my iPad. <laughs> right. It's unbelievable, that replaces right? That $5,500 <laughs> a day. And it's like every time I plug it all in, I just laugh. I know. It, it, it's... It's like a you remember when um, <laughs> I feel like everything comes in waves. You remember when cell phones were were gigantic and then they got really, really small. But now they're getting bigger again. <laughs> it's like that, Yeah, that's true. They've, so I, I'm hoping that we don't come around that bend where uh, video recording software or, or hardware is gigantic again. I like you, I like where it's at now. Oh, you, well, yeah, remember the bag phone? Pretty much, pretty soon there'll be like a Michael Kors <laughs> phone, <laughs> and it'll oh weigh like God. 30 pounds. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, um, we've talked so much about this. Would you be down to perform waiting out the weather for us? Yeah, why not? <laughs> we said, why not? <laughs> oh, why the heck not? Why not? <laughs> That's what all these people are here for anyway. All right. Well, geez, I brought, just happened to have my guitar with just me. Happened to have it. Well, you guys, uh, coming up next, you guys, we have our midweek motivation from leadership coach Tony Espinosa. But first, here's our good friend Kevin McLaughlin performing his brand new single, Waiting Out the Weather. Woohoo. All right. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm, I just totally went blank. Let me make sure I got the lyrics in front of me because I'm seeing I. It's okay, buddy. Uh, what, what, what do they call that? Um, old timers? No, it's called suddenly everyone's looking at me and I'm suddenly nervous. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, we'll edit it out and post. Yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't mind. No, everybody knows I'm whacked anyway. That's okay. Okay. I accept you for your whackness. You're awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here we go. I remember going downtown to meet the gang Have a beer, chase some girls, and we just hang That just seems a million miles away Nothing like today We're having a time when things don't look too good right now but we're gonna be fine Nothing keeps us down On down the line We'll come back together But for now All we have to share Is waiting out the weather Waiting on the latest news Who knows what's really going on Even the church has empty pews The silence roars on We're laying low Wait for better weather we're all alone, but we're all in this together. 
Yeah, we're having a time And things don't look too good right now But we're gonna be fine Nothing keeps us down On down the line We'll come back together But for now All we have to share Is waiting out the weather I always wanted much more time at home Collect my thoughts And just be left alone Well now that I can All I want is to get out I don't know why we only want What we ain't got But this much I know We're having a time And things don't look too good right now but we're gonna be fine Nothing keeps us down On down the line We'll come back together But for now All we have to share Is waiting out the weather For now All we have to share is waiting out the weather whoop, whoop. Yeah That is a great jam Fantastic I love that jam Thanks. It really is You know it's so great is, It's uh, catchy Yeah Yeah You know what I what I heard is it's just comparing to the last time I heard you perform it here on the show um, to now the confidence and just to hear how you have pulled it together as a as a as a song is so cool to hear the difference of wow. you know because we're like revisiting it um, uh, just before the show started, you know, just to like listen back and like look back at our old episode. Um, you know, it was like it sounded like a song that was written quickly or not quickly, but written uh, and then performed immediately. Yeah. Like you it, know, it was 48 hours between the yeah. time it, it was thought of and performed. It performed. Yeah. So uh, it's it's cool to hear how it has how it has grown uh, since that day. So congratulations on your release, man. Thank Amazing. you so much. And it's Absolutely, just, it's just getting more and more relevant too. I mean, it's yeah. such a song of hope. Yeah. Really, really, it was really good. Great song. Yeah. I was just uh, you might, guys might have noticed some commotion going on. I just got a little <laughs> note passed across my desk here. Oh, you sound so official. <laughs> and uh, so this is an all points bulletin. Beep 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 beep. Yeah, beep, right. Beep, beep, that's what beep, I was envisioning. <laughs> uh, I just want to read this out loud because oh, no. I want to make sure. <laughs> That she feels like an asshole. Yes, that Ellie, <laughs> Ellie the bad bitch Bible, Ellie, my beloved sister, uh, that she <laughs> she uh, realizes what she's done. <laughs> so, uh, without going into uh, elaborate details, uh, my sister uh, left her keys very far away from her car. And very, uh, very far. far away <laughs> in two uh, different directions. Yes. Uh. Without going into specifics. And uh, so we're going to have to send uh, our two panelists here on a little scavenger hunt to find a spare key uh, to run that to her. So and then I will be back. And then Jordan will be back. Oh, yes. that's not that's Tony's <laughs> that's, empty seat tonight. Ghost. <laughs> There's Jordan. <laughs> um, I do have an assignment for you though before you leave oh, okay uh well not before oh, you shots? leave no 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 oh. no we'll figure that oh, out well, we could make that <laughs> okay that <laughs> we, could we be could figure that out. add that in just yeah, for good I mean, measure um, while you're doing something <laughs> yeah. do that so too <laughs> when you find the key i would love for you to skype in and oh. and give us an update oh boy <laughs> oh way cool enough to an update on the uh oh go, lord you think we could do that 
I, I think, think we, we could arrange that. that. Yeah. We, so we'll have a we'll have a little field operative out there, and uh, we'll get a little update on <laughs> on the bad bitch Bibles. Uh, We're making a news keys. report out of it after all. I love it. <laughs> we have a remote reporter. <laughs> oh god! So we'll do that. So all right, you guys. Well, let's just get Adel and go and get her sorted out. You are superheroes. Onward and upward, Derek. You're more so a superhero in this. Um, I know. I was like, mm. <laughs> uh, so it's we'll, only a drive. It's only a drive. Um, the spare key is on the counter, and uh, yes, sir. Good luck and Godspeed to both of you. Grassy ass. We'll uh we'll await the Geordie files until you return, okay? Okay, that sounds excellent. All right, good deal. Uh so Kevin It's just, just you and me, baby. It's just the two of us. <laughs> oh yeah. And then there was two. And then there was two. <laughs> yeah, I, I called I called her and told her to act like she lost her keys. So uh, so so you get, get you alone. Get me alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, good deal. <laughs> Well, you guys, well, uh, we get reorganized here and uh, and uh, maybe get some shots into our lives. We're going to move on to our midweek motivation segment here. Uh, who's ready to get motivated? I am. Me. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Motivate me. Absolutely. Uh, so each week, uh, our good friend, Tony Espinosa, uh, we've been lucky enough to have him live the last couple, but uh, he usually sends us in a video to give us a little motivation to get over that hump and uh, into our end of week weekend time. So uh, get your pens and paper handy to take some notes. This is your midweek motivation. Bradbrock.com. How you doing, my brother? Good to see you. Jams and Cocktails Wednesday night. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, so I'll just jump right into this one this week. I'm a little excited about it. Uh, you know, we live in a culture where we put actors and, and athletes and superstars on this pedestal. And, and you know, they, they think they have a voice and they, they, they kind of mold our mindset and they make us as a young age feel that we can you know, live this life and, you know, you watch TV shows and just the regular Joe is living this crazy, um, fabulous life with great cars and houses. And that's not reality. You know, you can make it a reality, but you need to take steps. You need to take measures. You need to, you need to be strong with who you are. Servitude towards others is one of the best way to reach your goals. Being humble and vulnerable on the surface of your life. And the way to do that is to be strong on the inside, not the outside. You don't need to tell people, you don't need to put on this front or this persona that you're this strong person. You don't need to tell people, I'm a strong person. If you have to tell people you're something, then guess what? That's not really who you are. Your character is going to come to surface when your character is challenged. It takes years to build your character, but it takes one second to completely destroy it. So with that being said, to be vulnerable on the surface of your life means you actually literally know who you are on the inside. You're 100% confident with who you are. So it doesn't matter what people think. You know who you are. What someone has to say about you, you'll never get mad. And a friend, an enemy, they say some bad things about you. You heard what they said. What do you do? You get pissed off and you start talking about them. That you're not, you're not strong with who you are on the inside. If you gossip and remin, if you gossip and not reminisce, but um, I can't think of the word right now, but if you're constantly putting other people down and you're, and you're going back to, to dropping down to their level and, and you're feeding in to what they want you to do by talking bad about you and you hearing about it. Now you're talking bad about them. That's exactly what they want. You're not comfortable and you're not strong with who you are on the inside. Think about the bamboo tree. One of my favorite lessons. The bamboo tree takes four to five years when you plant it. And in four to five years, you're gonna see this little tiny six to eight inch shoot sticking out of the ground for four years. You're gonna water it every day for four years. You're gonna weed it and make sure it's fed properly and you're gonna keep the sun on it. You're gonna water it and groom it and water it and groom it. For four years, you're not gonna see anything. But that fifth year, that bamboo shoot is gonna shoot up 80 to 100 feet in one year. And it's going to be strong. Not even the strongest hurricane force winds are going to knock it down. Why? Because for four years, it was building its roots. What nobody saw. The inside. 
For four years, it was growing stronger. Its foundation, its base, its strength, its heart, where it gets all its nutrients from, where it gets everything it needs to be strong, the inside, the roots, the underground that nobody sees. And then when the time comes, it grows to 80, 100 feet, one of the strongest trees, strongest pieces of wood out there is the bamboo tree. But it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. You need to pace yourself. You need to stay intentional. You need to stay focused. And you need to not let the outside, which you cannot control, other people's attitude, other people's ideas, other people's opinions, affect who you are, affect your journey, your journey, and affect who you're trying to be. I love you. Have a great week. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brad Brock. You're the man. Yeah, that is Tony Espinosa. Great message. And uh, we learned a little bit about bamboo, um, which was super cool. <laughs> if you guys need guidance and advice in your personal or professional lives, uh, reach out to Tony on his website at Tony Espinosa leadership dot com uh, or on social media. And you can type in Tony Espinosa leadership, uh, like, follow and subscribe him and keep an eye out for his upcoming master classes, uh, which is super cool. Yeah. So I've watched a lot of those, almost all of those, and he's spot on. I, I agree with everything that he says. Yeah. You know, to the bamboo thing is, is genius. Right. You know, it, 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 and it's crazy because they, they do. They just sky when when the time is right overnight, they just explode. But it's all that underground, all that foundation building that gets yes. them to that point. You know, all the preparation that makes the, the showy part possible. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah, and he's absolutely right. I mean, when you look at, at uh, reality TV, you know, they, right. <laughs> they don't show the preparation. They, you know, they just like, even if they show it like, in, you know, in a Rocky movie, they don't show the years of preparation. They just show a 45 second montage of cool stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do? You know, you got to you, you got to get through the film somehow. You got to make the movie happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, Kevin, yeah, Tony's awesome. You want to jam another song for us while we get prepared for yes, uh, for another segment here? Absolutely. <laughs> it's We're, just going to be us, though. <laughs> that's all right. It's, um, hopefully someone's listening, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're out there. All right, you guys. Well, uh, while, while Kevin gets sorted out there, get your thinking caps on because coming up next, we'll test your musical knowledge through your ears with a new round of Name That Tune. But first, here's a tune from Kevin McLaughlin. We all have hope in our lives to make things better We all have time to make it happen if we try So get on up Go out and make things better Yes, you can make it happen every day Don't give up, don't give out or reconsider You can make it happen every single day Don't let them stop you, don't let them make you bitter Never let anyone take away the fun Hope has a way Hope will make things new Hope for a brand new day Hope for me and you happen if we try so get on up go out and make things better yes you can make it happen every day hope has a way hope will make things new hope for a 
brand new day Oh, for me and you That is a song of hope. It is. That is officially my hope song. <laughs> is that a is that an original or is that a cover? It's an original. I really like that. Yeah, cool. Thanks. I got some really cool vibes off of that tune. It yep. was a. What were some of the influences on that? Because I, I felt it was very like Beatlesy, but but not. It was almost like Beatles and then like Chicago. Yeah, I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is a very Chicago influenced chord progression, and I, that the chord progression came because, you know, I mean, um, I'm. You know, I'm always doing that stuff, and I'm like, you know, I know how to play way more stuff than that. I should, let let me get a little more complicated. And right, right, so right. So I pulled that out, and then my niece's name is Hope. Oh yeah, so I knew this. That yeah. is my advice to my niece, Hope. Uh, I love it. You know, I feel like we've talked about this song before uh, because now all that's starting to make sense. But I love that tune. Well yeah, done, man. Thanks. Thanks. Right on. Well, would you like to play a game? Yeah. Well, as long as it doesn't involve any saws. Yeah. But. <laughs> you never know. You <laughs> never know what might happen here in the JNC lounge. <laughs> Well, you know, we'd like to invite everyone tuning in to play along with us here in the lounge to put your knowledge of popular music to the test. Here in the lounge, Kevin and I, because we lost a couple of our panelists, uh, <laughs> we have whiteboards, and the objective is to answer with the song name and artist before one of you at home uh, can answer in the comments. So we'll be randomly selecting a raffle winner of anyone that participates in the comments. So please chime in and I'll jot your name down and we'll pull it at the end. Are you all ready to play? Name that too. Yeah, name that tune. Calm down. Calm down out there. <laughs> all right tonight's category in honor of your release waiting out the weather this is songs about weather <laughs> okay i'll let you know whether or not i know uh, where is it at there we go <laughs> we like to have fun here all right you guys playing at home so the idea is to comment in the comments uh with the name of the song and the artist before uh and that will be the end time for Kevin, who's the only one here to uh, to guess the name of the song. I know what they all are, so right. I'll pretend to play. It's just me. <laughs> all right, Kevin, are you ready for your first clue? I certainly hope so. <laughs> all right, first clue category is weather songs. Here we go. It's raining men. Come on, man. You got to put it on the board. Oh, dang. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry, okay. Alex. I'll take It's Raining Men for a thousand. <laughs> Did I just ruin the game? You ruined it completely. Can we just pretend we didn't do that and do it again? No, it's fine. It's fine. So should I write it down? What's so funny is I I, I inadvertently showed the answers to uh to Jordan and Derek earlier on. So, oh, so they, you're just yeah. admitting that you cheated? Uh, I, I didn't. I, inadvertently. Oh, it, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. It would stand up. However, Jeremy Plant... Nailed it straight out of the gate here with uh, the weather girls. It's raining men. Plant. Well done. Oh, and Scott. Scott Benj also. He's a Scott, killer he at is, this game. He gets every answer. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of music. Love you, Scott. You're awesome. All right. Well done here. I actually spoke to Scott and his voice was working and everything. It was awesome. I know. I know. I'm so stoked for him. I can't wait for him to get back on the saddle, man, yeah. and get back into it. Uh, Ashley coming in under the wire with It's Raining Men. I'm, here, right? I'm doing everybody's work now. I usually have a producer for this, but uh, now I got to write stuff down. <laughs> Jeremy says his gay card would be revoked if he didn't get that one. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for the next clue? All right. Here we go. <laughs> I like this one. Here we go. Here I am. If 
play one more time for you folks at home. Kevin is feverishly jotting down. It's a very long title. <laughs> We're looking for the song name and the title. Or song name and the artist. Song name and you the want title. The song name and the title. It's unreasonable. We won it twice. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what she said. <laughs> you know, harder, faster, deeper. What? Yeah. The, what? I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> absolutely. No, that's the job. Oh, Scott, straight away. All right, let's see your card there. That's right. Well done. All right, Scott. Andrew Gentile got it too. Andrew, you're going on the list. All right. Ashley got it as well. You guys are killing it out there. If you're just joining us, uh, these uh, the category for name this tune is or name that tune is weather songs. So, are you ready for your next category or next uh, next clue? Ready and waiting. All right, here we go. A little tougher, only an instrumental there. Andrew texts in, he says, uh, fitting considering the Gulf right now. And uh, we do send out our, uh, our hearts to uh, all of those uh, on the Gulf Coast because you are about to get rocked like a hurricane with a hurricane. So um, Hurricane Laura, right? Hurricane Laura, yeah. I know what that's like. I lost my house to a hurricane. It's not as fun as it's built up to be. No, no. I've had friends in Louisiana that uh, that they're, they, she sent me a photo of her house, and it was just the roof above the water. It was unbelievable. They rebuilt now uh, since a uh, beautiful home, and uh, they're all good. But uh, it was tough, man. All right. Andrew, who stopped the rain. And Scott with Who Stopped the Rain. Well done, you guys. What did you have over there, Kevin? Yes, well done. All right. It's so much. It, it, these two knuckleheads wouldn't have got any of these songs. So no, no. It's killing it. These songs are older than they are. <laughs> Scott got it before before Andrew Andrew says, no dice for me. Good job, Scott. Scott is a machine at this game. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready for your next clue? We got two more. Here we go. This one I think is a little tough. Watch the lightning when it lights up the sky. It was a guilty pleasure song because I, I love that tune. I'll play it one more time for you guys listening at home. Watch the lightning when it lights up the sky. Oh, Ashley says her feed keeps freezing. I hope that's not on our end. It doesn't look that way. We'll keep an eye on it. Scotty in with the win again. I love a rainy night. Eddie Rabbit. That's the answer to that one. What do you got over there? Yeah. All right. Well done, Kevin. I'm shocked. I knew it. All right, you guys. Last and final clue here. On Name That Tune. I hope everybody gets this one. Ready? Ready. I feel like that was one chord too many. <laughs> Kevin Kevin started writing it immediately. The very first note. <laughs> uh, I don't think we need it, but we'll, we'll do it one more time here. One of the most iconic song openings, I think, of all time. <laughs> all right. Any day now, you guys out there. <laughs> ah, Scott. Scott, that one was particularly for you. I know how much you love Prince. Uh, Purple Rain Prince. Absolutely. Andrew and Scott, you guys both got it there. Well done. Well done. All right, Kevin, what do you got over there on your card? Yeah. Is it in the photo here? There it is. I see it there. Purple Rain. Yeah, there's a cool story about that song. Oh, yeah? When uh, Prince wrote that song, he realized that Journey had already written it. And he called Jonathan Kane and he was like, dude, I just rewrote your song. And he listened to it, and he's like, yeah, you're right, but no one will ever figure it out. 
go ahead and release it. He's like, are you sure? Because you already wrote this song. And uh, he was like, yeah, no problem. And so I, I played that song with a band. I played it with Relayer, and they didn't believe me. They're like, no way, that's not a Journey song. You, that's not the same. So I played the outro solo, and it, they were like, oh, man, it, it is the same song. <laughs> I can't think of the name. What is the name of the song? Oh, if any of you out there know what he's talking about. Uh, There's a Journey ballad written by Jonathan Cain. <laughs> that is something the same out there. song as Purple Rain. Scott says uh, we have about Scott a 15 to 17 second lag between when they type and it reaches us. So. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are lagging real hard out there. That's okay. Uh, everybody, Everybody's live streaming these days, so... No worries. That's why we use the whiteboards. Well, next time you listen to Purple Rain, just go. And you'll know what I'm talking about. Isn't that a uh, faithfully? That's the song. Faithfully. I got it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, I could see uh, where, where that would be similar. The progression is identical. Yeah. No kidding. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look I'll have to look this up. I'll have to verify with my sources. Do it and tell me if I'm wrong. Because it could be lore, it could be, you know, somebody told me some fake crap on Facebook or something. But I could see I, I mean you said you played it along with it and it and it was fine. So it, you it never is. Know. It really is the same song with, you know, some minor changes. But it was Right, right, right. The the reason why I like that story is because Prince was cool enough to say, Listen, uh, this is too much like your song, Jonathan. I'm not gonna release it. But Jonathan Cain was like, don't worry about it. No one will ever know. And it was decades before it ever came out. And, it, and, and it's incredible because both of those songs were just mega hits. Unbelievable, so, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the secret. Maybe the next song I come out with will use that progression and I'll actually make some money. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> it's been enough. It's been a long enough time, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's a secret. Nobody will ever figure it out. All right. Well, that was name that tune. Thank you guys so much for participating. We didn't have a very many. Uh, I think I think our our little lag is uh, part of that problem there, but uh, that's okay because uh, nothing really matters. That's you know? a song too. Yeah. That's a Metallica tune. Yeah. Nothing really matters. Oh, yeah. Nothing else. Rah. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew says that YouTube is about 15 seconds behind, but it's a better stream. So if you guys are looking for a little better quality uh, jams and cocktails on YouTube, this is streaming live there as well. Not a lot of activity on that particular channel. But if you go there, give me a subscribe. That would be awesome. So while we uh, gear up for another segment, I'm kind of flying off my seat here because uh, some of our... Uh, some of our people are gone. <laughs> so I jinxed it because I said one of my favorite things is to like do something totally unexpected and go with it and hope it's yeah. a good thing. So let's see if I'm right for the show. Yeah, right. We, we might be doing the Lipton tea again together. <laughs> so you can have you a might... second cup of Lipton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do like free refills here with the Lipton yes. tea. <laughs> let's see. My favorite word this time is uh, did we do? Did we have to do that again? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yours was one of my favorites, though. What? Uh, well, cool. It was good. It was good. Well, would you like to play another song for us while I uh, come up with something off the seat of my pants here? Sure, but wash it first, will you? Uh, uh, yes, we'll we'll have a ball washer. Genius. Genius. I'm in. I know. I might have to sneak around you while you're performing. I'm not going to disturb you, am I? No, is if you're going to make a shot, I won't mind at all. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We will do that. So we have ball washers coming up. <laughs> and uh you're insane uh, uh, you're I telling me it. you're awesome. telling me uh my, my favorite kind of crazy <laughs> careful what you wish for oh hey I'm writing that down ah so yeah there we go gotta start writing that down we lost we lost our producer so uh i'm terrible at writing it oh that's what i was gonna do before we uh before we move on i'm gonna ask you to give me a number between one and four and that will be our raffle winner and don't worry if you guys have already won something because uh, we have other stuff. I hope you like hot sauce because that's the other stuff. <laughs> Brad Brock hot sauce. All right. Give me a number one. You got your own brand of hot sauce. Ooh, I that was ominous. Hot oh, sauce. Hot sauce. 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 Yes, I do. In fact. No uh, kidding. Yeah. It's my Brad Brock's hot pub hot sauce. So uh, number from one to four. Three. Three. 
Oh, Ashley is our winner. Congratulations, Ashley. Ashley and her husband are hanging out in their hot tub, tuning in with us tonight. Right on. So, Ashley, text me your address, which I might I already have somewhere, and uh, and we'll send you. I know you already have a koozie, so we'll get you some hot sauce, Brad Brock's hot sauce. I'll have to bust that out and, and show it off here. But before we get on to our next seven, I think I saw Jordan roll through the the, the door here. So, oh, cool. We might at least have somebody back, somebody to keep us company. Yep. <laughs> this guy's getting fresh in here. Yeah. Needs some help. <laughs> Here's a song from our good friend, Kevin McLaughlin. The wind grows cold It cuts into my soul The air flows through me Cause my heart's an empty hole A moonless night No one's on the road I always travel light I drag a heavy load And I ride All alone On this dark and lonely road And I ride Through the cold To get on And get out on my own Once I knew that we were done I rode out after midnight I struck out on my own Just following my headlights Out in the air so cold Feels like my skin is gonna break it was the right time to go This hard ride's all I can take Still I ride All alone On this dark and lonely road And I ride Through the cold To get on Get out on my own Nice. Another original? Yes. Let me take you out of the tunnel there. Oh, thanks. I really like that one. I like Drop D. That's Dro- one of my favorite things, man. Drop D is so fun. It's It's got some bigness to it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that... Uh, so I'll give you the, the uh, exclusive backstory on that song. Oh, I love it. So... One of my favorite things to do is to ride my motorcycle at night. Really? Oh, yeah, because it's not hot. Ah, And yes. the road is empty. So uh, I wanted to uh, meet up with a friend of mine in Orlando. And I had a gig. It was when I was performing as a solo artist at Disney's Vero Beach Resort. Oh, wow. So I had my son um, drive up the gear. And he went fishing on the beach while I played. And I, you know, I rode up, and then after it was done, once I knew that we were done, I rode out after midnight. That was because the gig was over, and I sent my son home with the gear, and I rode to uh, Orlando. Well, it was January, and I was prepared for the cold quite well, and I was fairly comfortable. But there was this, like right here, 
and imagine my glasses are on, uh-huh. and there's like a little triangle okay. of skin that was the only thing oh, no. exposed, and it, I think it broke off and shattered on the road oh, while I was riding. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh man, I've yeah, I bet that cold air was just nailing that spot. Oh man, oh, yeah, and you can't just let go and you know <laughs> fix it. Fix yeah. it, yeah, because you're gonna die <laughs> for real. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh man, too fun. <laughs> uh, speaking of your son, I saw some news uh, earlier on, maybe about a month ago, that you got a a little addition coming to your family Ooh, here. Yes, yes, yeah. And my son is having a a, a daughter another daughter oh making you a papa again huh yep how do you feel i'm, I'm happy yeah i'm very happy he's got a good girl and good. uh lower to death good to, you know it's really funny is um i when i initially saw it all i saw was kevin the glocklin and i was like no fucking way <laughs> I and then i had to like i had to like <laughs> research it a little bit more I, I creeped a little bit and then i was like okay Okay, his son, yeah, well, yeah. his son Kevin. <laughs> there, there, there was a time in my life when that was a real danger. All, yeah, yeah. All turns, but I'm way, I'm way out of that zone right now. <laughs> Too funny. Well, we got Jordan back here in the in the studio. Welcome back, Jordan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's already better in here. Thank you so much for saving me from being. I thought I was gonna oh. like it, but it was. How long have you been gone? Like an hour? Something like that. Yeah. It feels like five. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It was like but Mission Impossible. It's truly dun, good to have you back, dun, though. Thank dun, you. Dun, oh, thank dun, you. Dun, it's good dun, to be dun. back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, she just mixed up oh, some man. shots for us. So, uh, uh, Spitzing. Just want to say, uh, Mark Kowalski. Oh, yeah. Friend of yours. Yeah. He, uh, he, he moved over to our YouTube feed. He said it's a much better feed. Facebook nice. was glitching. So, uh, yeah. If you guys are having trouble with Facebook, uh, move over to YouTube. We are streaming live there. Apparently, it's a better feed. That would explain uh, the reason we're, we're seeing so many problems with our comments section. Yeah, but Mark, uh, Mark Kowalski is awesome. If you like barbecue, you got to go see Mark. He, Ooh, where, where at? Yeah, he's got he's got a food truck, but it's not a food truck. It's just a trailer that he drags, and he's got <laughs> it's called Island Time Barbecue. Okay. And it's such a super secret dry rub recipe that he doesn't even know what's in there himself. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Awesome. Is, is That's he, the truth. Is he local here on yeah, the Treasure Coast? Yeah, wherever they have uh, food trucks, he'll he'll show up there eventually. Awesome. Well, Mark, uh, feel free to drop a shameless plug in the comments there, and we'll uh, we'll give you a shout out. I love good barbecue. So, uh, cheers, you guys. Welcome back, Jordan. Yay! Thank you. Here's good to Jordan to, being good, back. Good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the code red version? Uh, this is the fireball. Version. Oh, the fireball. Version. Yes, Ooh. we'll give you old faithful. That uh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I, I oh. feel I feel like I like the code rum one a little bit better, but that's not bad. That yeah. tastes like Christmas. It does. That, that tastes like I want a lot of that. Yeah. Does that taste like home? <laughs> <laughs> no, my house doesn't taste like this oh. at all. Oh. <laughs> It does taste the way that uh, that our house smells a lot of the time. We, we love those Christmas scents oh, here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is delicious. Uh, Scott is uh, here is joining good. us on YouTube as well. Hey, you guys, while you're there, please subscribe. Uh, just hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell button. And uh, Ringle, jingle, and, jingle. Yeah, come and uh, join us on YouTube. Uh, I feel like it's a more fun platform anyway. No offense, Facebook. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> um Guess what, Jordan? What? You're just in time. For what? What? For bypassing the wheel. I mean, do you want to spin the wheel just to see if you yeah, would have let's lost just anyway? see what the fate holds, but All right. So Derek isn't here. But he is on but the biggest he, he, mission. He's on a mission of his life. But this is uh this is what could have been but will never be. Drum roll. Here we go. Oh, well, that was a weak spin. Oh, it would have been you anyway. I knew it. <laughs> Jordan, you are on the hot seat. And I am ready. All right, you guys. I've had 33 weeks to plan. 33 <laughs> weeks each week. And I didn't plan at all. We have one of our favorite segments. We pay tribute to the late, great James Lipton, host of Inside the Actor Studio. But... Uh, we were going to spin the wheel to see who was doing this, but unfortunately for Jordan, 
She's the only one here. By so default. <laughs> by default. So she is here. So Jordan, are you ready? Jeremy, you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, let's take a little trip inside the Lipton Tea. Hello, Jordan. Welcome to Inside the Lipton Tea. My name is Brad Brock, playing the part of Mr. James Lipton. Are you ready to begin? I'm ready to begin. What is your favorite word? Discombobulated. <laughs> what is your least favorite word? Um, it was between two. I would say pus or mustard. Oh, those are rough. Those are bad. Yeah. What <laughs> turns you on? Uh, confidence. What turns you off? Close-mindedness. What sound or noise do you love? Bradley serenading me. <laughs> <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Bird squawking. Oh, really? Yes. Is any kind of bird? Like the really loud, like, ah! maybe crows. Okay. Maybe gross. That kind of sounded. Yeah, that was crow sound. Yeah. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck sticks. Just fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck sticks is good though. Yeah, had to switch it up a little bit. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to try? Um, I think it'd be kind of cool to be a tattoo artist or like an alcohol distributor. Like a like a representative for the alcohol companies. Yeah. Or? And then you just get to like travel places and sell them alcohol and just try some, a lot of alcohols as part of your job, which would be kind of cool. I feel like that's pretty parallel to what you do here. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, pussycat. Oh, uh, what, what a job would you not do under any circumstance? Um, it came down to the one that always stands out to me is a pedicurist because feet are gross <laughs> or something to do with like septic tanks or poop. I feel like that's that's quite a trend recently. Yeah. I, I also would not want to do anything with poop. Yeah. I, have, I have a really hard time with that. Yeah, the smell is not good. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, somehow there was uh, some leftover McDonald's. <laughs> I don't like where the story is going. <laughs> leftover McDonald's in, our, tra in, in, yeah. our, in our rubbish bin outside and... Uh, it rained and filled it somehow got through the lid and filled the trash can with all of um, this like McDonald's breakfast in it. Who and, had uh, McDonald's breakfast? I don't know. It wasn't me. It was somehow it wound up in our trash bin. That's weird. Maybe I rolled. Maybe it was in there and I rolled it. I don't know. <laughs> um, we have drive by garbagings all the time. It was um, a drive by garbage. So garbaging. this had clearly been in there a while and I opened it. And the smell was so bad that I, I. How bad was it? I had a really hard time, like, getting like I had to compose myself and and I just dumped it out and let it sit there. Hopefully, hoping that maybe the sun would dry things out a little bit. Mm. It didn't, but I did go and clean it up because I'm not a complete piece of shit. That is nice. When I worked at McDonald's, when I would drop the fries and when they would come out of the oil, they smelt like cow poop. <laughs> Or just like how I imagine cow poop to smell. Like a barnyard, maybe. Yeah, you never smelled of. cow poop? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> not a country girl. Yeah. I guess not. I can imagine. I feel like that's how it would smell. You can find out what it smells like. Just drive west. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out to the farms <laughs> yeah, in Fort Pierce it doesn't and take, wherever. It doesn't yeah. take long. Oh, Dang my it. goodness. Final question. <laughs> that was a weird one. <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Okay, now just like this, I would probably want God to say, God damn it, you made it. About damn time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jordy finally on Yay! the lifted team. How do you feel? Crushed it. Crushed it. <laughs> It's pretty good. It's definitely better to be prepared. This chick's got like notes, like cheating in math <laughs> class inside the lifted tea. Yay! <laughs> Mm. 
very powerful intro there. <laughs> well done, Jordan. Oh my gosh, and it goes back. That's so great. I know. You just got all the technical yes. snafus fixed. Jeremy says, you loved the shake machine. I remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember one time uh, my photography teacher came in to McDonald's when I worked there, mm -hmm. which was weird because it was like way on the other side of the world from where he taught. Maybe he lived over there. I don't know. But he was very adamant about having a milkshake and I had to tell him, I was like, the machine is broken. Like, it doesn't work. <laughs> and I, like, poured some out. And it was, like, slush grossness of melted whatever. And he was like, I'll just take that anyways. I'll just take oh. that. That's fine. And I was like, do, do you want to, like, pay for it? Or do you just, like, want the <laughs> you machine can, filled? <laughs> this I one's on me. You yeah, can just I was have like, it. I mean, I guess if you really, really <laughs> want that busted milkshake that's that's fine oh, for you it was sounds so like gross. he might have had a little crush on you i'll just take I, anything you got anyway yeah it's like girl. oh that that disgusting <laughs> i drove all the way around town for this <laughs> just to find you in your mcdonald's <laughs> uniform oh man oh man oh time. man well you guys we've got the geordie files coming up next how about another song kevin oh my gosh another one okay, another cool. one yes <laughs> and another can i one. can i make a request of course Ooh. can we do the minky stinky man yeah, why yes. not? No, that. why not? There's no why not at all. So, so Jordan, yes. I would like you to uh, actually listen to the song. <laughs> and For <wow>. once. <laughs> For the love of God. <laughs> but tell me what it's about. Okay. Okay, because I love hearing what people believe this song Ooh, is about. Okay. Oh, a challenge. Oh, we got to retune. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm living that drop D life. I'm so professional. <laughs> What's that sweet spot? Down on the corner, downtown in the street, he sends his girl out, take your money nice and me. Out on 2nd Street They know he's the man He's got your number What you want is in his hand Don't miss your chance To get it while you can From the Mickey Stinky Man yeah. If you play the game, he just might call you out. Everybody's waiting to see how it all turns out. Ain't no use to hide, he can see it in your eyes. Once he's done dealing, we all fire up and we ride. Don't miss your chance to get it while you can. From the Mickey Stinky Man Don't miss your chance To get it while you can Bravo, bravo. I really like that song. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's good too. Single single number two. That is the suggestion, Ooh. and I'm I'm gonna take it. <laughs> I'm gonna run with it. Well, that. if you if you need like a you know, like a utility guy on that track, uh Oh will you be the make 
you stinky man. Well, no. Well, well, that brings us to the point here. Uh, Kevin's, uh, he's he's now censusing you or or surveying you. I feel it's too obvious and not correct. So I'm going to say it's the marijuana man. (laughs) I mean, it's a good guess. It's solid. So most times it's it's a drug dealer or a pimp. That's what people think. Yes, yes. But the reality of the situation is that it's about a raffle. Uh, so and um, brad actually witnessed these events in real life i did and back back years ago there was a thing called fort pierce bike night and i was in a band called crossbone ah. and they had it right down on second street in fort pierce right where like the second street bistro is that block mm-hmm. and, and on the nights that crossbone played there was like 1500 or 2000 motorcycles there oh, wow. every time and it was spectacular and there was one of the organizers of the event is no longer with us. His name is Jim Hicks. And a lot of people knew him as Slim. And he did the raffle at the end of the night. So what he did was he got his uh, one of the Budweiser girls. He gave her a bucket and she went out and got money for the tickets. Right. And at the end of the night, he would do the prizes and they had a grand prize and i have no idea why but his name for the grand prize was the minky stinky <laughs> so uh, good uh-huh. <laughs> how would i have ever gotten that well there's no you, way <laughs> it's not possible well, unless you were there it's yeah. it's possible because he actually told us this exact story yeah on the last show that yeah. he was here with us uh when he was featured as he was, yeah. But you're busy. You're very busy on the show. I am. I have Let me a tell computer. you what. <laughs> was <laughs> I was I not completely lost while she was gone for the, the thirty <laughs> minutes or the twenty five minutes she was I've gone? I've never heard any a, a, a bigger amount of embarrassing whining in my wow. entire life. Was he, he all disheveled? You. He, you, you don't don't ever leave him because he's screwed. Oh Dude, boy, you don't understand. I had to write my own names down. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, what I else heard you I? pulled the number while I was gone. I did. I did. I, I had to like do my own raffle drawing. Ugh, I even wrote the date and everything I, for the. I know. Mm-mm. I know. No amount blame, of help. We'll is, blame it on Ellie. No amount of Ellie help is going to get him all the way there. <laughs> but do your best. You know, it's really funny. Uh, not that we don't love you, Derek, but uh, for for whatever reason, um, uh, a handful of our cameras here in the studio are are mobile phones. They have their own independent battery supply. Um, uh, did it RIP again? Well, it's not that it RIP'd. It's actually I watched Derek's camera, which is right here, right in front of me. Mm-hmm. It actually died and it's flashed zero percent battery. Oh, so, so Derek, you, you got out at the right time, but <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have to put him over <laughs> into, into where Tony would be sitting normally. But <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> hopefully that camera was still good. But anyway, good guys. golly. <laughs> That's the only drawback to old phones. Maybe yeah. if you got a different battery in there, it might not have a danger uh-huh. of exploding. Uh, sure. Well, you know, we like to uh, we like to live on the edge here. It's the weird. GMC you would podcast. think the cord would charge it while it. Who knows, right? man? It doesn't. Who knows, buddy? They, uh, you know what? They make adapters for that. Oh. I, you know, I think it's because I I kept the cameras running because I had them going and I didn't want them to shut off. Mm. And it just kind of like the bat- the charger was not charging the battery as fast as the camera was using it. So here nor there. Neither here nor there. Yeah, it was on for hours, so hmm. I'm, I'm glad that it lasted as long as it did, but there you go. Perfect timing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we did name that tune without you guys. It was really sad. Oh, my goodness. Even though Kevin yeah, Kevin you, was on you, it, dude. You, got, you I, did it? I can't believe I did well. Wow. Yeah, you got every single one. Did I ruined you? it at the beginning, though. I called out the answer. Before. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> you didn't ruin it. Massive outrage. If, 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 if anybody didn't know that song. <laughs> Oh, Uh, man. Well, you guys, each week, Jordan Taylor (laughs) drops music history and news, celebrity birthdays and gossip and local entertainment headlines in her very own segment we like to call The Jordy Files. All right, Jordan. All right, Brad Brock. What do you got for us this week? All righty. So 
Um, I have some quiz questions wrapped in for you guys to play with. We love quiz questions. So we will get started. Today, birthdays, August 26th, which is today. I just like to say the day, you know. 1910, (laughs) Mother Teresa. 1910. Her birthday is today. No kidding. Yes. Wow. Well, um, and then. I feel like she just passed away last year. Every year I feel like she had just passed away. I thought so too. And then I think, I feel like 1997 is what is coming (laughs) to. So like 200 years ago. 30 years ago or more. So, and then in 1941, Chris Curtis, who was the drummer for the Searchers. Does anyone know their hit song? The Searchers. Uh, come on, Scott. Don't make us look stupid here. I found you. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I didn't know this, but I mean, I know this song. Is Scott in here? Yeah, Scott. I I think he moved over to, um, to our, our, uh, YouTube feed. Oh, everyone's on the YouTubes. Yeah. I'm like, uh, Facebook is kind of sucking right now. Yeah. Well, their hit song was Love Potion Number 9. Aha! Uh-huh, bazinga! <laughs> uh-huh. That was a great tune. It, it was. still is. Yeah. Was that their only hit? Were they like a one-hit wonder? I don't know. Scott just said Searching. So maybe that was one of them. Oh. But uh, how fun. Interesting. Then in 1948, we have Valerie Simpson from the husband and wife songwriting production team, Ashford and Simpson. Uh, they wrote hits such as Ain't No Mountain High Enough, which is one of my personal favorites. Oh, yeah, good one. Um, You're All I Need to Get By and Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. Um, and then Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand in parentheses. Ah. Um, all great songs. All great hits. And then in 1966, uh, Dan Vickery. Okay. The guitarist, <laughs> no one said anything, so I guess that's... Sounds good. No one laughed, okay. Um, the guitarist from Counting Crows, which I feel like you should know. Oh, yeah, Dan. Is it Dan Vickery? Vic- yeah, I, I, so. okay. I don't know. Any, you know. You know what's really funny is I just saw a post uh, about this from because I follow the Counting Crows on social media. Oh. I don't know any of their last names. I just know their first names. Oh, okay, so but, Dan yeah. from Counting Crows. Um, you know, they had the hit song, Mr. Jones. Don't tell me how old he is. It's going to make me feel uh, real old. Well, 1966. So Christ. he is old. There you go. Math. <laughs> that's that's uh, math 54. power. 54. He is old. 54? Oh, nice. Good job. Yeah, look at I you. Think pretty close to that. Anyway. Something. Yeah. He's a numbers man. We'll give him that. No, no I've never been accused of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they received a 2004 Academy Award nomination for their song Accidentally in Love, which was a great one. Yeah. What well. was that movie? Um, Accidentally in Love. Yeah. What was the, what was the film? Two Weeks Notice. <sighs> <laughs> love Actually. No, it's for Shrek. One of the Shrek films. Oh, it did say that, and I deleted it from the fact. <laughs> Whoops, yeah, no, two weeks notice. It. That was with um, uh, Sandra Bullock and um, they have the uh, Hugh Grant. the taxi was, song, the, the yeah, big, big yellow taxi. taxi. That was the uh, the um, Jody Mitchell, Joni yeah. Mitchell cover. Yeah, true. Okay, I was which in is love. great too. Everybody who releases Big Yellow Taxi does well with it. Yeah, that's it, a good it, one. Cheryl Crow did that as well. Didn't she? Did she? Ah. I'd have to look, but that's. Uh, it is such it's a fun a song. Tune, it yeah. is a good God, one. She, in her version, so great. She's such a weirdo. I love Joni Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> is that your official review? It's my official Jody review. Joni Mitchell is such a weirdo. Such a weirdo. Such a weirdo. In, a, in like the best, it, it's the most endearing way. Uh, I mean that in the most endearing way. It sounded <laughs> bad, but. She does make fun little sound effects in oh. her in her songs. Yeah. She'd be like, woohoo. Oh, Jer- ah. Jeremy said Shrek. Oh. Yep. Whatever, Jeremy. And um, <laughs> so Carry on. that was 1966. Also in 1966 was Shirley Manson, uh, the vocals for the band Garbage, mm-hmm. who was supposed to open open with Alanis Morissette, who I was supposed to see, which would have been awesome. But yeah, that did not happen. It's OK. It's OK. And then in 1969, Adrian Young, who was the drummer. 1969. Yeah, good year. Um, the drummer for No Doubt. And they had the 1997 single, Don't Speak. Can you believe that song came out in 1997? I don't want to think about it. Oh. Yeah, don't speak about it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't speak, speak about it. Uh. <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> but don't, don't you. And then 1969. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Right on time. 1969. <laughs> 
was the year for drummers because not only was Adrian Young from No Doubt drummer born, the drummer, percussionist, and record producer Drew Hester was born. He played drums and percussion with Joe Walsh, Stevie Nicks, Beck, Jewel, Daniel Powder, um, Foo Fighters, and Taylor Hawkins. He was a, you could say he was a heavy hitter. Uh, oh, sure. He's on time with his own funny stuff. Wow. I knew it was coming. Now he's I, knew it was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's amazing, isn't he? Uh, yeah. God, I, he has to be if he I, played with all those. I mean, look. Oh, I thought you were talking oh. about me. Oh. <laughs> I was, actually. He, oh. But it was sarcasm. <laughs> she she knew better, so she was like clearly yeah, not clearly. talking yeah, about yeah. Brad. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that can't be bad. <laughs> Shame on you. No, no. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and that is all for the birthdays today nice. that I could find. Um, <laughs> and then I didn't have my secret source provide, you know, top secret birthdays to me today. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Scott. Um, you're not supposed to reveal. Oh, it. I'm sorry. Secret source. Yes. And then, I'm just saying Scott because I love his name. Oh, yeah. Because we want him to <laughs> chime in. Um, and then on this day in music history. In 1965, Sonny and Cher were at number one with I Got You, Babe. Sonny Bono was inspired to write the song to capitalize on the popularity of the term babe, as <laughs> heard in Bob Dylan's It Ain't Me, Babe. So Leave it to Dylan. Yep, that's what that song was about, everybody. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, Scott, speaking of the devil here, chimed in. He said uh, uh, the late Leon Redbone was born this day in 1949. <gasps> oh, thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Is that it? He usually has like 30, 40, 50. He right? might, he, he he might, he might, might still be running. They might trickle in. He, yeah, he's running it through the computer at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. He's got to process <laughs> the it all. mind computer. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and then in 1978, Frankie Valley went to number one on the singles chart with the Barry Gibbs song, Grease, from the movie Grease. Love that song. Great song. Um, it is a great tune. And it went on to sell over 2 million copies. So nice. awesome work. And then in 1987, big day for, or big, yeah, big day for Sonny, Sonny Bono, um, who once said that he never voted until he was 53, announced that he was running for mayor of Palm Springs, California. He won the election in 1988 and went on to win a seat in Congress in 1996. Get it, California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, Very California way to do it. I know, things. it's so yeah. Californian. <laughs> Uh, and the, I thought that was great. I was like, of course he did. I've never voted, but I'm your president. But now, now I'm going to be in Congress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't vote, but. <laughs> um, in 1994, Scottish singer Frankie Miller suffered a massive brain hemorrhage in New York while writing material for a new band he and Joe Walsh from the Eagles had formed. Uh, Miller spent five months in a coma. He then entered rehabilitation, relearning how to walk and talk. Isn't that crazy? That's Holy horrifying. Yeah, yeah. But like good for him. I mean, bad for him, but then good for him. Did he ever finish the record? Obviously. I'm that, just, I don't know. I don't it, know. Did, it didn't say. Maybe. Mm. I'm a, maybe. He learned how to walk and talk. So, I mean. Think. It's not good enough. We want a record. <laughs> we want a record. <laughs> <Dang> Listen, <laughs> walking and talk. If, if Randy Travis can do it. <laughs> By golly. Then anyone can. And then here's another trivia. In 1995, Seal went to number one on the singles chart with Kiss from a Rose, <sighs> taken from the Great film. Song. Batman Forever. Dang it, Bradley. Yeah, come on, man. That was like, that's Can't in my like him. jive time, man. Uh, that was back in the MTV days. Yeah. And I remember watching MTV and that song stuck out like a sore thumb in the playlist. because uh -huh. It was the only song all day in three, four times. Yes, oh. you're right. <laughs> Stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> yeah. God, no, That's now I need to play that song all day. Yeah. In 3-4. In 3-4. And then in 2003, Rolling Stone magazine named Jimi Hendrix as the greatest guitarist in rock history. Um, is there any guesses? Just one person that either of you can think of to throw out that also made the top 10 list. Eric Clapton. Jimmy Page. Damn. Yep. Okay, keep going. Jeff Beck. Um, Chad Atkins. Oh, yeah, Chad Atkins. He's good. Van Halen. What? The, well, no, wait. What year was that? Uh, in 2003. 2003. Okay, so then... Oh, uh, jeez. But from, like, the same... 
Same era? Yeah. Oh, well then, you know, Beck, Page, um, Eddie Van Halen. I say that? I yeah. say that. Uh, other ones on the list from the 60s or from up till 2003? Um, I think they were all like 60s, 70s-ish, I want to say. Dare I say George Harrison? You dare not. No, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I only have, I think, like six of the ten, like top 10 here. But you guys hit it nail on the head. Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Keith Richards, Chuck uh, Berry, Stevie Ray Vaughan. And oh, yeah, Stevie. I forgot my Stevie. favorite name. Actually, it's the worst name ever. Rye Cooter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rye Cooter. I was like, is that his real? Yeah, they That's... named him Dry at first, but they the school made him take the D off of his name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, God. That's No, terrible. Ry Cooter is an amazing guitar player. <laughs> if you've never heard him, he is amazing. Is that yeah. his real name? Yeah, that is his real name. Awesome. What, uh, <laughs> did, he, did he perform with a group or anything like that? Or? I feel like I've heard the he's, name. His, he's familiar because of him on his own. I don't know what bands he's played in, but he is just an amazing guitar player. Hmm. Like that, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, country rockabilly kind of. Well, with a name like that, I would imagine it had to be something in that vein. <laughs> you, you've never heard of Rye Cooter, Bradley? I have not. Wow. Yeah, if you're not I a guitar to. player, I, would, I wouldn't even imagine that you would ever hear of him. Because mm-hmm. he's one of those oh. niche guys. Mm-mm-mm. Like Eric Johnson and oh, Steve. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric Johnson. You love Eric Johnson. I do. He did the Prodigal, Prodigal Son. That song, right? The Prodigal. He, prod, prod, oh, here's, how, prodigal you, here's prodigal. how you <laughs> might know him. He and Steve Vai did the guitar parts in that song with Ralph Macchio, the Crossroads movie. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ry Cooter played all the country style guitar parts. No that. kidding. Yeah. Okay, that kind of makes sense then. Interesting. Nice. All right, Very Jordan. Very good, guys. Um, okay, and then moving right along. In 2007, after two years... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but Scott just chimed in with oh. exactly what you just said. Ry Cooter <laughs> did the slide stuff in the movie Crossroads. There you go, Scott. Thanks, Scott. He's a genius. Awesome. <laughs> you guys are in on the same page. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page. <laughs> <laughs> in 2007, after two years, the Rolling Stones played the final show on their A Bigger Than... A Bigger Bang World Tour at the O2 Arena in London, England, the longest and biggest tour of their career. It became the highest grossing in rock history at $560 million. Wow. Yeah. Get it, Rolling Stones. And then Mm -hmm. this, um, she is apparently a big deal. The name sounds kind of familiar, but I don't know. Are either of you familiar with Kate Bush? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these names today are good, aren't they? It's like Kate I made Bush. The, It's like I Kate made Bush. It's like I made them all up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what is this? Is this news or satire? Uh, okay, well, in 2014, Kate Bush made her stage comeback after 35 years. She received a standing ovation as she closed the show with um, cloud busting. Uh, from her 1985 hit album, The Hounds of Love, the 22 shows had completely sold out in less than 15 minutes after tickets were released in March of this year. So between March and August. And yeah, she sold out in less than 15 minutes, all 22 shows. So she yeah. has to be a big all the good that will flip do and them. deal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, Kate Bush. Yeah, she's giant. And she's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, in stature, career wise, she's giant. (laughs) (laughs) Clarification. (laughs) Uh, And then a little bit of my Jordy T. Ooh, we love the Jordy T. I have two really good pieces for you. Well, one kind of sad. So first, we have to pay tribute. Yesterday, August 25th, was the 19th anniversary of the death of the one and only Aaliyah, which is crazy that it's been 19 years. It is incredible. Yeah. So that was yesterday. And then in some scandal, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's 28-year-old son, Adam, is facing criminal charges for repeatedly stabbing his neighbor with a hunting knife in the face and head over a dispute about garbage cans, obviously. Um, He must have put some McDonald's breakfast. Oh, Oh my God, your story. (laughs) I didn't even think about that. Oh, (laughs) pulling it together, pulling it together. I'd say that's justifiable. Oh, that's terrible. If Bradley would have found the culprit, I think he may have, you know, had some exchange. Give the hands. 
I don't know if I'd have gone to the extreme of with a pocket repeatedly stabbing knife. somebody to death with oh, a, just wait. a pocket knife. It gets better, folks. Oh, it gets better. So the victim and Abdul Jabbar share a driveway because, you know, they live in California, I'm assuming. So they got their little little cute shared driveway. Um, and the neighbor confronted Abdul Jabbar about the trash cans after he did not take the trash cans up for his elderly roommate. Um Injuries included a fracture to his skull and brain bleeding. He is fine. He did not die. Wow. Um, Adam Abdul-Jabbar is facing a maximum sentence of nine years. He is scheduled to appear in court on September 9th. And I guess this incident, I think it said happened in like May or March or something of this year. So it was a while ago. Yeah, like full Um, on. I I feel like that's full on covid psychosis uh yeah. right there you know what i mean that is, i, I yeah. agree yeah, that would be I, I feel like my assessment if i was an attorney that would be my strategy that would be my defense strategy i'd be i would straight up be like my client was suffering from, from full-on covid psychosis can, can we pull up mm. a picture of the neighbor that got stabbed oh, oh no i did pull up a photo of his son which i did not imagine him to look like because you like in, in court, you could say, "Look at him. Could you handle being next to him all the time?" <laughs> <laughs> wow! Listen to him talk. Uh, could you imagine? Yeah, like, come on. Oh boy! You stabbed him long before I did. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of cute. When I was looking this up, they have little photos, and I believe Kareem and his son and wife and stuff were all on the family feud, which I thought was kind of adorable. <laughs> oh. They all have their little name tags on, and here's them shaking hands with Steve Harvey, which is cute. Oh, very, you can't see. But, yeah, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're looking at the photographs. Yeah, uh, describe them to us. Um, it's Family Feud. Very ve- vivid detail. We'd like to know. Yeah, and he has a <laughs> he has a big fro. Oh, perfect. I can show you. Well, I I glad to. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at. Oh that. my god, I can't believe how old, how old Kareem, Kareem is. is. Yeah, that's incredible. Yep. So that is oh. Adam. Too and, fun. Yeah, and that is all I have for you today, folks. All right, that's the Jordy Files. <laughs> Those are excellent as Jordy Files go. Thank you, thank you, thank you very kindly. Well, up next, you guys will be shamelessly plugging what we've got going on. But first, let's give it up one more time for Kevin McLaughlin. And then we're going to see what you've been uh, jotting down over there all night. Oh, yes, yes. We're going to put all this oh. to good use. Good. Yeah. I'm so glad you took over that duty for me. We would have missed a lot. Well, that's because you just Thank randomly you. left. <laughs> that's okay. That's You're written down. Yep. Oh, Ooh, it made the cut. <laughs> it made yes. the cut. We have it written down, everybody. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, Kevin, give us one more here. Oh, so I'm, I'm going to play a song. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, awesome. Only if you like to. I love playing a song, especially if someone asks me to. <laughs> and even if they don't. All right, so uh, this was in the intro. Oh, just a little bit of a blues tune here. I'm alone again. With a sick friend I'm alone again She's with a sick friend Well that must be what it is Cause I know she would not do that to me It's a girl's night out So she won't be here tonight It's a girl's night out So she won't be here tonight Yeah, that must be what it is Cause I know she would not do that to me These things happen all the time To keep my baby gone There's always a good reason Why my baby's gone But she ain't with another man Cause I know she would not do that to me I'm alone again tonight Cause she broke down on the road I'm alone again tonight Cause she broke down on the road Yeah, that must be what it is Cause I know she would not do that to me Something just came up 
so she won't be here again. Something just came up, so she won't be here again. Yeah, that must be what it is, cause I know she would not do that to me. Time to keep my baby gone There's always a good reason Why my baby's gone But she ain't with another man Cause I know she would not do that to me yes, I do. No, she ain't with another man Cause I know she would not do that to me Well, she ain't with another man Cause I know she would not do that to me Yeah. Awesome. So, um, <laughs> before the show started, we were we were chatting a little bit about that tune, and uh, quite a story there. Yeah, some uh, family history. <laughs> a little bit of family history there. Yeah. So that song is actually the list of incredibly lame excuses that I got in order from my ex-wife, well, my wife at the time, and uh, I fell for them all. Because I knew she wouldn't do that to me. Right. <laughs> but she did. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it's such, it's so savage. It's embarrassing, uh, it's but a, it's a, But you know what? It makes for great music, you know? Well, uh, you know, having, Experience. giving the choice of gone, going through that or not, I would have picked not. Yeah, <laughs> naturally. Um, but I did get a song out of it. And, uh, you know, that one I wrote on the dashboard of my F-150 while I was mowing the lawn. Wow. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. So you, you maybe you've, you've taken a break from mowing the lawn and now you're sitting in the cab of your <laughs> F-150 or your F-150 yeah, or no, was actually, yeah, mowing, actually the mowing the grass. Yeah, I mowed it with my truck. Oh, <laughs> behind you, like pulling a... You know, I, I don't know. Or, it, you no, know. actually, I used to own a lawn maintenance company. <laughs> uh, I come from the glamorous world of lawn maintenance. Oh, oh yes. And so I was... Very prestigious. Yeah, yeah, very. <laughs> and um, so I, I was at somebody's house that was paying me to mow their grass. And, uh, you know, over the sound of the lawnmower, this song started coming in from the ethos. And I was like, ooh, okay. And I stopped mowing their yard. Right oh, and what a good one. Like, bop, bop. Yeah. Bop. I love it, man. And uh, so I, I opened the dashboard and wrote it down on the back of an envelope. And later that night, I finished it. Awesome. It's a it's a great tune. It's one of my favorite. I mean, I anytime I have you on or, or I'm using it as a feature, I always pick that tune. <laughs> it's uh, I hate that your heart had to be broken so hard to get that song, but uh, oh, but no. well done. Looking back on it, I probably deserved it, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Well, you know, well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, you guys. <laughs> no, it wasn't my fault at all. She was just she just did that to me. Uh well, um. Before I guess we get into shameless plugs here, let's uh let's take a look at the at the board that you have over there. You you have quite a bit of notes there. I have a few notes here. So the the strategy was to because I've done this once before and it was a blast. It was mm -hmm. awesome. So uh, to write down some cool things that have gone on during the show and then <laughs> use those cool things to actually compose a song right in front of everybody live on the show. So no pressure. At all. At all. Um, and it could totally suck. You never know. <laughs> but we're, I'm going to give it a shot. I think what it's going to be, I think it's going to be the next big hit. Yeah. So cool. Cool. And we say a lot of sucky things, so it's fine if the song sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Might go along with it. Right? Speak <laughs> for yourself, young lady. <laughs> that could be one of the, okay, anyway. <laughs> so uh, what I got is code red ball washer. <laughs> <laughs> the bad bitch lost her keys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure to locate your keys after you get off the plane. Oh, <laughs> um, savage! Do, savage. <laughs> love you. I love your sister. She's awesome. <laughs> She's getting it though tonight. That's but it's okay. I mean, yeah. the, you know, the post office will her. mail her keys for yeah. you. Yeah, if and she can find where she left them, she probably she has even... her keys, and she just wanted someone to come oh, and meet her. Oh God, uh, wouldn't that be some 
That, yeah. She was alone in the parking lot and she wanted some company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm writing that, that down. I was going to say, is that there one of them? There you go. That's something that needs to get. <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievable. Uh, uh, if you guys are wondering where Derek has gone, uh, our, our panelist and craft service manager, Derek, has uh, run a mission to... to Deliver some extra car keys to my sister about a hundred miles away. Uh, He's the real one. He is the real one. So kudos to you, Derek, who I think is listening in on his in his car. <laughs> and let me be clear. It could happen to anyone. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't think any less of her. I honestly think she's awesome. But it's too easy. It's too easy. I can't I can't responsibly let this go by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Must be grilled. <laughs> yes. OK, so. um Hurricane weather, hope, oh, hope, don't let anyone bring you down. Be strong with who you are. Like bamboo. Like bamboo. Scott is a machine. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my, my favorite kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, Jordan lost the spin, but she'll talk about your birthday. She was alone in the parking lot and she wanted some company. Yeah, <laughs> so that's what I have. I like it. Scott is a machine. Scott is a machine. Wow, so, you've had a lot of them. Yeah. So the thing to do now is to figure out how on earth to uh, mold this into a song. So I think that the chorus is don't let anyone bring you down. Be strong with who you are. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's mm-hmm. our midweek motivation and we should perpetuate awesome. that. I like it. So let us let me start with that and see if I can put some... Co- oh, how did I end up with two picks here? I don't know. Mm. You never know. You never know. Can you play with two at one time? Let's find out. <laughs> Jordan, nobody knows that. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're one of those crazy finger pickers that have the, the picks on there. Oh. Maybe it's more powerful. Does it sound any different? I think it's more powerful. It's and definitely more- definitely more intense. Oh, it does sound better. I may do this from now on. Oh, see? <laughs> but uh, now I'm trying to think, so hold on. <laughs> <laughs> or you could use one one pick that is of a thicker gauge. Oh. And probably- no, because look, it's like there's like you're doubling a guitar part. Because see what I'm doing with the pick? Oh, oh okay. You're not so that's a little different. Oh. That's almost like a 12 Sounds string. Sounds like a double track. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Done with that. Oh, we're going for the F. Okay, so we got... No, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's better. I think we should go with three chords and the truth on this one. Three chords and the truth. That's And mm. I've got my, my first three I didn't like, so I've switched to the second three. I'm going to use all three. G... D and C. It's the holy trinity yes. of uh, music there. So, don't let anyone bring you down. But be strong with who you are. The bad bitch lost her keys. <laughs> and we got a code red ball washer. Scott is a machine Yes he is (laughs) And my favorite kind of crazy (laughs) (laughs) But Jordan lost the spin (laughs) But it's okay she'll talk about your birthday (laughs) Don't let anyone bring you down Be strong with who you are Don't let the bad ones come around Be strong with who you are Alright, now we got a second verse here, let's see She was alone in the parking lot (laughs) And wanted some company It's a cold red in the parking lot Just you and me <laughs> Don't let anyone bring you down but Be strong with who you are 
We got Jordan and Brad around <laughs> Help us be strong with who we are Outro chorus. Don't let anyone bring you down. Be strong with who you are. Do that one more time. Don't let anyone bring you down. Yeah. Be strong with who you are. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Strong with who you are. Yeah. Don't let anyone bring you down. Be strong with who you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yay! <laughs> Put it on wax. That was actually kind of. Good and that was kind of good, yeah. yeah. So we'll have to work on that. All we'll songs should be, be written the, like that. Be the f some of them <laughs> do come out like that. That's true. <laughs> what do you guys think out there? Let us know in the comments yeah. what you think. Of There's that. Some of that could be salvageable, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think, I, think I, I do think that hook has massive potential. Yeah. You should definitely put that in your in your go to file. So yeah. that'll be the first uh, Kevin Brad collab. Ooh. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. So uh, fun. this should be like a proper. Uh, this should be a segment that we do all the time. Yeah. That's sure. fun. Yeah. And then maybe. Isn't that cool? Like, uh, th 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 nothing like, you know, some spotlight and some pressure. To yeah. <laughs> but you know, like if sometimes you, when you push the hardest, everything comes out. Yeah. So that. So that, so that means. A <laughs> little toilet humor. You know? so <laughs> with that being said, we need Kevin every week. Right. No. Well, uh, OK. Uh, all right. <laughs> you, you may change your mind after a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Andrew Gentile he uh, he d texted in he said that he said that hook is the jam. <laughs> All right, cool. It so was a good hook. That is, it that was is, a good I, hook. I think that's worthy of keeping, and we just need to build around that. <laughs> Absolutely, so good. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Well, you fun. guys. Uh, in this uh, segment coming up here, we like to talk about all the things we got going on. So uh, sit back, relax, and listen to our shameless plugs. Shameless plugs. You know, I love them. Yeah. You love the plugs. Love the plugs. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get some plugs for this thinning hair. But uh, until then. Stick with these butts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do it again. We'll do just, the shameless uh, plugs again. We'll stick with these butt plugs. <laughs> these, these plugs are getting more shameless by the second. <laughs> <laughs> How is that for shame? Uh, <laughs> There's no shame in butt plugs. Not supposed to talk about our bedroom, uh, our bedroom adventures. Shenanigans. <laughs> Sometimes they help things along. <laughs> oh, oh my good god! Golly. Well, you guys, uh, we this is our shameless plugs segment. <laughs> the shameless butt plug segment. <laughs> no, the only shameless butt plugs are the ones with the battery ports in them, <laughs> or like the or the unicorn tails. Yeah, my, my oh, little yeah. my little butt plugs. Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, oh my with god! The, with the rainbow <laughs> tail, like rainbow a my little tail. <laughs> tail. <laughs> yeah. This okay. Is far too out of hand. I think we just started a new website. <laughs> if it didn't already exist, I'd say let's get on that. But uh, Ooh, shame but it does. I wasn't aware that it did. You'll have to tell me where it is. How about shameless butt plugs? Okay. Anyway, okay. moving along. <laughs> As always, we like to kick off shameless plugs uh, with our special guests. Kevin, uh, I know you got a big show coming up pretty soon. Um, we, we put the flyer on the wall back there. Uh, tell us about that show coming up and then any other shameless plugs that you got okay, to uh, well, put out there. Wait. If I there can, it is. <laughs> if I can do this backwards and in the other way. Okay, there we go. It's that way. <laughs> it is that way. Oh. 
So uh, <laughs> Hog Wild 2020, I've been helping John Schneider um, just in a tiny bit. Uh, but what he's doing is he's taken the you know the traditional hog wild that's been at Archie's for since before recorded time. Right, right. And uh, stepping it up a notch instead of just going and having a few beers and watching a band all day, it is going to be awesome. Southern rock bands from all over the southeastern United States and me playing. <laughs> Wait, you More are totally allowed to lump yourself into the greatest southern rock bands. In the southeast and beyond, perhaps. Well, that's but, generous, uh, and I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's going to be like, great bands all day long. It's going to be at the, um, what is that big concert venue that used to be a trailer park in Fort Pierce? <laughs> wow. Uh, the um, On the South Beach Causeway there. Oh, the inlet? Or, or the, no, the that place? No, it's is um, it a proper concert venue, or...? It's like when you go over the bridge, it's the first thing. It's that big vacant lot on the right. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, what, what do they call that? The, co- the Causeway Marina. Causeway Cove Marina. Causeway Cove Marina. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can get there. It's a great spot. You can arrive there by land, sea, and air. Sweet. And uh, there's going to be an all-day concert. It's going to be huge. And, uh, you know, because it is, you know, COVID time, nobody's sponsoring it. Uh, it's John is just putting it on. Um, sans sponsorship. Wow. And how is he? How is he? I mean... Uh, we, we're definitely going to pull this together and, and package uh, the promo up a little bit, but uh, but how is he how is he managing that? Sand sponsors he's just dropping a ton of cash to wow, make it happen. That's really incredible. And so he's not even charging vendors. If you have anybody who's a vendor that wants to be at a biker event, um, it's your chance to do it for free. Uh, and so that's going to be a great event. It's it's not going to be the traditional hog wild where it's just a bunch of drunk bikers having a great time, which is <laughs> which one is of, fun. One of my favorite things to do. <laughs> right. It's going to be that as well as amazing <clears throat> regional bands from all over the southeast United States playing. Nice. Uh, like from noon until you know late into the night, there'll be bands, 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 bands. Now, do they have a uh, like a Facebook page or event or a website that, that yep. people could go to? If you go to the official Hog Wild page, and official is spelled with three Fs, that's how official it is. Oh, <laughs> Very wow. official. F F F. That's hilarious. Huh. Three Fs. And so that's my shameless plug. That's going to happen on. October 10th, I think. What does the poster say? <laughs> I, I can't read that far away. <laughs> yeah, Saturday, October 10th, 19, nice. uh, 2020. 2020. <laughs> so coming up, I uh, also want to throw out that Mark Kowalski uh, with uh, Barbecue Island Style will be there as well at Hog yes, Wild. He will. Yes, so, he will. Awesome. Uh, he mentioned that there on YouTube. He's the official barbecue barbecuer. Barbecuer. Yes. So, of course, nice. the necessary shameless plug for tonight is that I would love it if you went on to Spotify and listened to my song, Waiting Out the Weather, and click that follow button, because apparently when you're on Spotify, the follow button is a big deal. So, it is. It is with the, with the, the algorithms and yeah, all this, the things. It's all yeah. about the algorithm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all about it. So, And honestly, I would love for you to listen to it and, and have it affect you in a positive way. So that's really the goal, is to uh, touch someone. Uh, musically, <laughs> musically, <laughs> professionally, <laughs> to, to to move someone on um, to move someone to tears is really the ideal thing because tears represent the strongest version of every emotion. Yes, and if I can bring you to tears with my song, then I will consider job done. Absolutely, <laughs> nice, awesome, so, very well, well, very well. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and. Uh, Band shows being as rare as they are these days, and even when they do get scheduled for me, they get rained out. So my band has yeah. Not, welcome to summertime in Florida. Yeah, has yeah. not played in for quite a while. So I'm very, very lucky to have uh, the Kevin McLaughlin Trio playing Friday and Saturday night. Friday we're playing at the Backbeat Music Parlor in Vero. Yes, and Saturday we're playing at the Fort Pierce Beach Resort. I think I hope that's right. Yes, we are playing at the Fort Pierce Beach Resort. Right, that's the former Rum K, the former Inlet. Yeah. Yep, if you drive to the jetty and you're there. Yeah, go go to the end of it. If you go any yeah. further, you're going to drive yeah. off into the ocean. They've got a new stage there. It's right in the sand. And, it, it, I mean, the day drinking capital of the world is right there. That's it. Yeah, I noticed that. I, I looked at some of the photos, and it, it looks they've definitely put a little time and effort into that spot. It looks really, really nice. nice. Very excited. 
What uh, you say? That's on Saturday. Saturday evening, six to ten. Nice mm-hmm. or eleven or till we're done. <laughs> till, till, <laughs> till we're done. Till they kick us out. <laughs> till they kick us yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Well done, man. Yeah. Thank very, you. Very, very cool. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I am getting to actually perform live in a time when so many of us can't. Yes. It's true, man. Uh, you know, I, I, some of us have been more fortunate than others. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to kind of get back into my groove. Um, but like with that being said, um, there is resources for musicians who are struggling to get back in there or find their stride to reach out and 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 talk to some people about getting back into gigging. Um, some of our friends, I guess this is kind of a piggyback shameless plug, but uh, our friends at Treasure Coast Entertainment, Jeff Farshidian, uh, he books for venues around the Treasure Coast. Um, Zach Jones at Snorkel Corn Entertainment, you know, reach out to him with your press kit. Uh, talk to him. If you've talked to him before, talk to him again, because there are many musicians that are ditching their gigs because they're choosing they're choosing the safe road, which is fine and admirable. Absolutely. Um, but it's it, America. Do whatever absolutely. The hell you want. And it leaves holes for, for musicians that want to get out there and work again. Um, Ron Hart from Earth Tones um, is another resource. Reach out to these people. Um, they'll get you back on track. They'll get you a gig. Um, there, there's there is resources. There are people that are that are looking to help musicians get back to work if you want to work. Yeah. So and on a, a more national scale, there is an organization called the it's the NIVA and they've got the hat, the movement hashtag save our stages. And that is a, a lobby group. They are lobbying the United States government to issue benefits to our music venues because they're they're closing already. They're starting to close. And if we don't do something about that, there will be no place to go see a, a band play. Yeah, I just saw uh, just yesterday or the day before I saw a horrifying post that the Funky Biscuit down at Boca Raton uh, closed their doors. Maybe not permanently, but for now, because they're just not able to to do what they need to do to stay, you know, you know and that, that goes for a lot of our bar based venues that are unable to open around the state because bars somehow are just polarized in in the the covid response you know while while other other venues flourish you know well, well, same with our yeah. breweries that are now having to become restaurants just to just to do business it's incredible yeah so um, and certainly not interested in getting political mm-hmm. a lot of establishments are utilizing legal counsel to help them navigate the severe issues that they're going through so you know lawyer up and the people that are are getting results and getting things done. Absolutely. Again, it's America and you know, we need to preserve our ability to act in an American way. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And hashtag save our stages. You guys go and Google that Um, contribute. If you can uh, support in other ways, like subscribe, share, follow anything you need to do. Uh, We want to make sure that our local live music is, is available and ready to hit the ground running when everybody else is. You know, it shouldn't be a massive struggle. Um, but yeah, thank you for bringing attention to that. That's very, very important. Uh, anything else over there to shamelessly plug? Shamelessly pl- Well, go find out where there's some music playing anywhere and go there. Absolutely. Um, you we know, do have a great resource here on the Treasure Coast, uh, tcnightlife.com. Uh, Todd and his wife um, are, are very, very good. Todd at ke- Masoner. Yes, great. Are people. Very, very good at keeping up to date. Uh, Todd reaches out to me uh, every now and then to make sure that my calendar on my website is accurate. Uh, which you know, it's been kind of wonky over the last couple of months, but it's only, pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's I, pretty, I, pretty standard. I was gonna say I can only imagine, but no, I know exactly what. <laughs> but that's yeah, like. <laughs> um, so they keep a very, very good calendar on their website tcnightlife.com, um, and. They're a great resource to go and check out and you can see all the venues and uh, that are having live music and the, and the bands that are playing there in a calendar form. So you can make plans in advance or whatever you want to do. Uh, but they're 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 amazing people and they they are doing God's work out there for for putting out a you complete come, calendar. You should come up with some sort of jams and cocktails hashtag so that you can just hashtag that and then find out where everybody's playing. 
Well, it is. It's hashtag TC Nightlife. Is that it? Oh, well, no, wonder. no, I'm just saying. Uh, no wonder it's a good idea. Somebody's <laughs> doing it and it's working. Yeah, TC Nightlife. They're, I'm good they're, at that. I'm good, I'm good at coming up with killing, ideas there, that people have already implemented. There's nobody currently... <laughs> That is uh that has a more comprehensive calendar yeah, than awesome. than those folks. Um, so check them out, and uh, they'll point you in the direction of uh, good live music that's happening. It's all about the good live music. Yes, even the bad live music is good right now. <laughs> Anything, I'll take yes. it. I'll take whatever it is. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, Jordan, you got anything to plug over there um, this week? I do not. No. 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 We're gonna have to figure something out. I know. I need to get you involved just, in shameless plugs. I'm just a boring bitch. No. What? No. Stop. You are anything but boring. Uh, I am taking. Wait, wait. Put her. Put her back oh. on the calendar. How could that be boring? <laughs> I know. I am taking a sign language class. Oh, you're still taking that class? I'm still taking it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on the five year plan. <laughs> yeah, it was like a two, like a three week class. So this is like month three on it. I don't think there was a time limit. I paid for it, so there you go. <laughs> it's online. Well, at well my speed. then eventually we'll have somebody uh, who needs subtitles when we can have Jordan signing the entire show. I could oh, put her down yeah. in the little corner over there. Oh yeah, you I could, could do work it. on it. Tight. You could yeah. you could you do the whole ASL version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too funny all right well then it comes to me one day you guys uh i do want to say thank you again for tuning in sorry that facebook was having some issues with us tonight but uh youtube is a great platform we we have very very few problems over there so please um visit us there more often jams and cocktails podcast on youtube go and subscribe and hit the bell Apparently, that is wildly important these days. So hit the bell for notifications and uh, join us over there. Um, We can interact with you in the chats just as well there as we do on Facebook. That is Jams and Cocktails podcast on YouTube. Yay. Uh, (laughs) Also, like our pages, Jams and Cocktails podcast on uh, Facebook. Um, The links, I believe, are for, for all of that is in the description of this video that you're watching right now. Um, also, uh, because we are building our YouTube presence, um, when we get to 50 subscribers, I want to put together a very specific and special live stream just for our YouTube viewers, uh, for, for that milestone. Uh, currently I think we're at 12, so we got a little bit of a ways to go. Um, but, uh, once we get to 50 subscribers on YouTube, we're going to put together something special that you all could be a part of. And, uh, it will be unlike anything you've seen us do before, but it will be in the realm of what we do. So it won't be anything wild and off the, off the hill. So please go and subscribe, share our YouTube channel with your friends. Uh, if they dig podcasts, radio shows and live music, local to the treasure coast and beyond, uh, please do that. That would be awesome. Um, we also have a brand new website up jncpodcast.com or jamsandcocktails.com it'll take you to the same place um you can see all these videos it's very video based website so it has all our links to all our social media you can watch these shows live there on there on that website and uh, see all our previous things and our segmented uh videos of all the segments that we do throughout the show uh so if you don't want to hear me ramble on like i'm doing currently <laughs> You can go in and uh, separate that so as well. You separate it out in stems, like you can just watch all the Jordy files in a row. Yes, or all of the. Check it out, jncpodcast.com. Definitely want to check. You that can out. check that out. Oh, also, cool. one thing I noticed on YouTube is, uh, if you're watching our shows on YouTube after not live, but uh, our post shows, uh, I figured out how to separate things into chapters. So you can actually look in the description and just pick what part of the show you want to watch. Oh. And it's very, very cool. Services for the JNC uh, fan on the go. Seriously. We, we just keep growing and, uh, and and trying to tailor our show to you. Um, I do have a few one-man band shows coming up this week. Uh, this Thursday night, tomorrow, I will be at Manatee Island in Fort Pierce at 5.30. Uh, Friday night, I'll be at one of my favorite spots, the Vine and Barley in Port St. Lucie at 9 p.m. I really, really love performing there. I love late shows. I feel like they're more fun. Um, and, you know, I get to drink a bottle of wine and it gets it gets a little hectic out there. Very, very cool spot. I love them at the Vine and Barley. Go check them out this Friday. Come and check me out. Nine o'clock Saturday. Saturday night, I will be at the Dolphin Bar in Jensen Beach, another place I love to play. Great food, cool ambiance. 
uh, and the staff is out of sight. Saturday, I'll be there at 7 p.m. Sunday, I'll be at Sailfish Brewing uh, in not in Stewart. That is a typo uh, in Fort Pierce. I'll be there at 2 p.m. Um, come and hang out. Great it's spot. A, it's a great spot. It's nice and early. Come and have some day drink beers. Uh, have some pizza. Downtown Fort Pierce, the day drinking capital of the world. Yes, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Whoop, whoop. I think we're we're trying to put together a little crew to do some scootering uh, after that particular show. So if you want to get down on scooters, come and and hang out. I'm there until 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., I'll be packing up my shit. And uh, we'll be going and looking into uh, scootering around so town. Instead of the Duval Crawl, it will be the Fort Pierce Scooter. The Fort Pierce Scooter. You should write that down. <laughs> <laughs> the Fort Pier- I just snorted so hard. <laughs> the Fort Pierce Scoot. Um, so, Fort yeah. Pierce scoot. Uh, whatever you guys are doing, uh, come out and see me at one of those shows. I'm always around. Um, let's see. Um, also super important, the Code Rum Company. Um, we, uh, Johnny Ringo is a, is a dear friend of mine and, uh, we, we love his product. Uh, code rum is one of the smoothest rums on the planet. They're so great. Um, they made what a difference, what a difference between those shots, between the, the completely different between the fireball shot. Very good. Both of them were very good, but very, very, but different. very different. Yeah. Um, I, you the, know, I would say the code red rum was integrated its flavor as a whole into the shot better yeah it was amazingly fruity isn't that incredible with a cinnamon shot i I felt like it tasted like the the fireball shot to me tasted more like a christmas shot like it was more like a i don't know like a cinnamon fireplace shot i don't have that the the, uh vocabulary but the envelope (laughs) on the flavor was way longer on the um on the fireball yes that flavor showed up after the flavor of the shot yes yeah, and the, and, the, and the code rum made it a very sweet. I felt like it, it. I was tasting something, and I couldn't pick out all the different flavors. It was really, really yeah. congealed. It was very nice. So, uh, check out code rum at thecoderum dot uh, dot com, or on social media. Code rum. Check them out. Love them. Ringo, I love you. Uh, massive thanks to the Sneaky Tiki in downtown Stewart, who are massive supporters of local live music and oftentimes stream the Jams and Cocktails podcast live on their TVs while we're uh, performing them here How cool is that? in the lounge. It's so great. Like, uh, Darren is an amazing dude, always supportive of, of yeah, all the crazy is. shit I do. <laughs> and uh, everybody there is awesome. Yeah. And the staff is great. Um, so we love you guys. Sneaky Tiki, go check them out in downtown Stewart, uh, just across the street from Duffy's. Um, <laughs> uh, with that in mind, please support local. It's so important in these times. Um, chain restaurants and big, big box stores are going to continue. They will thrive. They will carry on. Uh, our local mom and pop shops, our breweries, our small restaurant bars are bars particularly um please support them when they are able to open their doors and do their thing um, because that's going to be a massive deal and you don't have to go and sit in there and chain smoke your cigarettes and you know and be involved in that like i'm sure they'll be able to package up your stuff and send you out go in and, and get a six pack instead of going to 7-eleven go to your local bar and get a six pack pay the extra two dollars and support local seriously it, it's it's one of the best things you can do if you can if you can afford an extra two bucks don't get me wrong i'm not trying to make people poor out here but uh but they're gonna need that support from us even if you don't want to go and sit inside if you want to just grab something to go go and support them it's it's awesome be sure to catch the jnc podcast live each wednesday night at 8 p.m eastern on facebook youtube or on the jnc podcast website jncpodcast.com check us out on there that is my shameless plug yay it's so cool I know. Do, do do that again cuz that's so powerful do that again shameless plug you get so into it I know. that totally rocks <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Well, we are winding down here uh to the end of our show. Kevin, 
it really is a privilege to have you here all the time. And I, I, I wish that, that you were here all the time. You are, you have such a great spirit. It's so forward thinking. Uh, no one else has been like, let's write a song on the show. Uh, and these are incredible songwriters that we have on the show. You know, uh, I love each and every entertainer that we host here, but uh, you are by far one of the most creative on the spot humans yeah. that that we have here on the show. And I thank you so much for, you for, for being, being here and being you yeah. and sharing your, your moment with your very first release Woo. seriously man yeah. waiting out the I'm weather honored. Honored. yeah so for me big deal been a long time you know my no story is, is, a, is a weird one and a long one and uh if i had a chance to do it all over again i would do it again even harder uh but uh, you know i put off my music career and now i am not putting it off anymore and i'm doing what it is that i can and it is a, a wonderful journey absolutely Absolutely. And you're, I mean, you do have an incredible story as weird as it may be. Well, weird is good. Yeah. You're a weirdo, I I, but I like weirdos. Apparently weird, <laughs> just, weird. Like, just like Joni Mitchell, you're a weirdo, man. <laughs> yeah, But if you're not weird, like that's boring. Yeah, man. Normal is boring. I've always said normal is boring. So, um, yeah. What's, what's next? What, it, what is, uh, I'm hoping that it's the minky stinky. I hope that's what's well, what next. What am I going to release next? Well, maybe I could get some inf- input from everybody because I am going to do a full band version of the uh, the waiting out the weather. Nice. Um, you know, I'm going to be. I want to do a, some live. I want to do like a live EP, uh, recording songs with the trio and the, and the four piece, just live on stage and and putting that out. Excellent. Uh, and then I want to do a proper album that includes all that stuff plus more. It's perfect. I'm 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 so stoked, man. Um, oh, what was I? I'm just I was just reading. I have so many because because we film or or we're, we stream on so many different platforms. I have three different sets of uh, of comments up here. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to read them all, but I've also has a bunch of beer and scotch and shots, so <laughs> that's always helpful. Um, yeah, uh, I will recommend that our friend Mike Bamonte at the Hitbox Mike. Factory. Um, Hitbox Factory? Hit the, the, the Hitbox. Box. Why do I think? Hit, I'm thinking Hit Factory. You're thinking Hit Factory. Um, but it's but, not a factory. It's, it's a box. It's a box. <laughs> the Hitbox here in Port St. Lucie. Wait, no, we, <laughs> we have to write that down. Write it down. <laughs> it's not uh, a factory, dear. Uh, it's a box. Uh, who will actually uh, is, is scheduled to be on the show very soon. I uh, would love to have Mike back. It will be his official feature here in the new JNC lounge. We had him on uh, before we, we made the commitment to the show and uh, he's just a riot. So we'll get to see him in all his wonderful uh, COVID hair beard glory. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he's grown so it out. He's, he's going on out. a pizza streak. He's been on a pizza streak for, I think, 160 something. Yeah. 156. It sounds like Something a Mike like Bamonte thing to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've known Bamonte for 20 years. Have you really? Yeah. We went to middle school together. Yeah. I've known him a very, very long time. So uh, if you're a musician out there looking to record um, two great recording studios, one here local in Port St. Lucie and then one in Stewart, uh, Mike's in Port St. Lucie is the hip box, of course, and Rain Cat Studio in, uh, in Stewart. Great All guys great guys, well. very creative in their own right. Um, so, uh, and very different in their creative approach. So, uh, check them both out. Be sure to tour both of their studios, and uh, and find which one fits fits your taste in your project. But uh, really great guys all around, um, and they've put out some some very very cool music. Uh, yes, I know- one of my favorite guests on this podcast was johnny debt yes he recorded his album at the hit factory box the hit factory box <laughs> and it came out great it did so. it did and uh, and johnny's such a such a cool cool artist and uh and, and and great music and just an overall cool person so we hope to have him back on the show too i'm thinking about putting together like a one-man band off um so i might have to pull a permit for a sound ordinance. you could have like a four-man one-man band band 
<laughs> Write that down and spell it correctly. <laughs> is, that, that, is that what I meant to say? I don't know. A four man, one man band band. Oh, man. <laughs> Andrew Gentile also he oh. chimed in. He said, Brad can drive a scooter with no hands. And uh, is that true? I think it's I think it's true because uh, I think he's referring to um, when we were down in Key West. This is many years ago. Uh, Andrew was the guitar player in my band at the time. And uh, we were down in Key West performing at Cowboy Bills. It was my first debut in Key West as a country. It's the only country bar down there. And and it was back in the Brad Brock and the Renegades time. You know, Uh, so. (laughs) So we were down there performing. And uh, one day we decided because it was three nights. Um, so on one of the days, we decided to all go and rent scooters and just scooter around like you do. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking that he's referring to that. I don't know, because I was probably heavily intoxicated almost the entire time. Not while I no was way. riding the scooters. Not in Key West. Naturally. Yes. No way. Never. No way. I no. know. I'm shocked. Shooketh. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. And I have to give a shout out to Bob Gentile for paying my deposit on the scooter because uh, I, I did thought not... you were going to say paying my bail <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or all but, my bar tabs. Seriously, <laughs> like I definitely did not like this is back. I was probably 22 years old at this point, and uh, I did not have enough money on a, any credit card or in my bank account to cover the deposit on anything yeah. on earth <laughs> so, like we got there and everybody got their scooters and i was, and they were like uh yeah it's gonna be like a 500 hundred dollar deposit and i was like 500 dollars <laughs> what yeah i was gonna say what a scooter deposit like five yeah, bucks <laughs> the scooter deposit was 500 bucks dear lord to rent the scooter was like 20 dollars oh, yeah well the wow. 500 bucks pays for the scooter if you yeah it. for that, like three scooters yeah well Could no it? no 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 not okay let me let me preface I guess it's too late to preface. Let me post this. Uh, post this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means. Um, it's his show. He can say whatever. I, I can want. do whatever I want. We're gonna post this. I'm gonna post this. Uh, these are the the motor scooters, like the, the, yeah, the like, zoom zoom. Like they have in downtown? no, not like oh. in Fort Pierce, but these are like like uh, mopeds. Essentially. Oh, like oh that kind of a scooter. That like kind a, of a scooter. Like a small like a Vespa. Yes, like a Vespa. Oh, like when they have the little side compartment where you can have a little friend ride with you if you mm. wanted to. No. Put a side on it. No. Oh. No, but no, it's no. like a step through motorcycle with no engine but, in it. But middle. yeah, it, it's a, it's exactly a Vespa is what it is. It's just a, like a moped. Uh, yeah, what it Google is. Vespa and you'll see what it is. She'll see. She's looking it up. You meet the <laughs> nicest people on a Vespa. It's true. Those cost five hundred dollars? That was the that was the deposit. Psh. Anyway, I didn't have Whoa. it, so Bob Gentile paid for it. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Uh, anyway, you guys. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, so you're seeing it now. They have a like car scooter thing, too, and it kind of looks like the smart car, but it's... Uh, and it has air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. It's only five grand. Dude, Key, awesome. West, Key West is amazing. I can't wait to get back down there. Uh, our friend from uh, Johnny Ringo from the Code Rump Company was just down there, and I just saw his photos for ages. And uh, felt very jealous. Key West is cool. I've been there a few times. Yeah. Always have had a blast every time. Mm-hmm. Nice. It was so great when I worked on the ships, man. We ported there like every other week. Oh, cool. And it was, you know, it was like right before we we made it back to Fort Lauderdale to dump all the guests off. So like it was the end of the cruise and we just didn't care about anything. So we just went into town and just got annihilated and went back to the ship. You know, It was, it was so good. <laughs> but anyway, you guys. Um, <laughs> since we're winding down, uh, thank you so much for hanging with us this evening again through all the, uh, Facebook side for once we on our side, we had a very technical, uh, knock on wood, technically, uh, problem free <laughs> execution. It, yeah. it was pretty good. I'm, I'm quite proud of, uh, of myself and our team here. Who would have um, thunk it? Go figure. We'd have a flawless show on our end and, uh, it would flounder on facebook with a minute and a half delays and, and, and it's time for facebook to invest in some servers they've been glitching a lot lately <laughs> perhaps it's well, not like everybody's running uh, video at the same time in the entire world well no. uh, they also <laughs> just recently changed over to their new timeline and, and and so i've even noticed some things even going live that are different I'm not able to invite a lot of the people that i was able to invite before it, it's 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 a little bit more bizarre 
a little bit more of a challenge. I'm up to the challenge. Very excited about it. Uh, but I feel like it was a little bit more difficult to find our show tonight there and with the delays. But I'm very impressed that a lot of our people popped over to YouTube and um, and continued on and interacted with us. So thank you all so much for seeing us on YouTube. Again, please subscribe um, and come and hang out with us there again. We're always there. If we're on Facebook, we're on our YouTube page at the same time. So um, very, very cool. Uh, please join us again next week. We do this every week, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I'm not sure what the show is next week. We got some things pending. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a fun panel show. So if you're not doing anything, let me know. Okay. <laughs> I might be calling upon you to come back and hang out on the panel. I will, uh, I will panelize. Yes. Thank you to Derek. Uh, R.I.P. Derek. There's yeah, Derek. We'll C. He's not in <laughs> Moment of silence for Derek in the yeah. car. Can we get some crickets? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the parking lot sounds like right now. <laughs> oh, oh no. seriously though, Derek is a superhero. He is. Uh, God not only bless did he him. cook us dinner tonight and uh and is just a cool voice on the show and personality, but he's also bailing my sister out of a massive, massive flub. Flub. Um, flub. I like flub. that word. So thank you, Derek. Yes, thank uh, you. We definitely owe you one. Um I told him he could have our firstborn. Well, <laughs> Gonna be waiting a while for that one, isn't he? <laughs> That's a good saying. deal, actually. <laughs> right? I thought so. <laughs> Tony Espinosa, sorry couldn't join us tonight, but thank you for your message. It made for a great uh, song hook. So it that's did. very, very cool. Um, uh, of course, Kevin, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Yay, it's an honor, man. And and again, congratulations on your on your debut release of waiting on waiting out the weather. Uh, very cool song very relevant song yep. looking forward to the next one man uh, Jordan yes sir the apple of my eye Wait. so lovely <laughs> I'm glad you made it back for the Jordy thank files you. thank you and yes. for inside the lift and tea just in time just in time just in, and well done by the way <gasps> thank you I won't even mention that you had notes and 33 weeks to uh, to prepare for that interview. And I did it in 33 seconds. <laughs> so good. The shortest one yet. Oh. oh, man. Well, you guys, we'll see you all next week for some more fun. Right here on Facebook or Jams and Cocktails podcast on YouTube. Come and see us there. Subscribe. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, as always. Until then, be kind. Listen to music. And don't forget, for the love of God, to drink some water. Oh, I thought you were going to say to wash your hands. <laughs> no, no, no. Drink, so cover drink, your face. Drink some water. You diseased up. Person. Cover your face. Cover your face for God's sake. <laughs> Hydrate and cover your face. But but really, drink some water. And it's wash so your important. hands, you filthy animals. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ugh. Oh. We're rocking out. We love you guys. Good night. Be good. <laughs> Watch this. We got something new for you. Maybe. Maybe. We got something new for you. Enjoy. <laughs>